everybody, welcome to yet another episode of this awesome Tuesday fighting game podcast as yet unnamed. My name is James Chen and I will be your host for today and uh, I will be joined along. Actually, can I turn this on? Let me see if I can do this really quick. I need to figure out if I can turn this on here. Let's see, do I have a camera? Oh, I do have this other camera. It's going to be a small view, but it is a, it is a tiny view, but this is a... Uh, this is what you're going to see over here. This is happening live on my desk right now. Uh, the boy, the cat is over here, of course, enjoying his belly rubs. I should get a, I should see if I could get a bigger camera view of that or something. Just have a constant cat cam on here because probably would get me more views too if I had the cat cam the entire time so uh but in any oh hi well look well see here you go hi I mean look obviously there's only one thing we can talk about on today's show Normally, I start the show with a news section where I catch everybody up on everything, and then and then we uh, discuss the main topic at hand. However, all of it is the same today. It is Street Fighter VI. I mean, literally, we went from, like, here's tiny little bits of information here and there, but now, all of a sudden, we have just gotten so much information all at once, and it is absolutely, uh, I feel almost kind of overwhelming because I feel like I've lost track of everything like I see information about stuff that I don't even remember being announced or whatever they've just been giving us so much information we literally went from nothing to like everything I had been wondering when's the beta coming I feel like we should be having a beta soon etc etc and then it was like here's everything by the way here's all the characters that'll be at launch by the way here's the beta by the way here's all this character information Dude, it's so crazy, <laughs> uh, the amount of information that we got. So, uh, I mean, honestly, Super Moose, I don't know if it really makes a difference, to be honest with you, because right now it, it, it just seems like uh, Capcom is really just kind of uh, uh, just, dude, like they are controlling the hype right now, honestly, like. Everybody's talking about this. Everyone's talking about the game and everybody's talking about what this game could potentially mean, you know, and 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 of course, by the way, we're getting the discourse again that we do with every single new Street Fighter game with all the old heads who skipped Street Fighter 5 saying, "Yo, Street Fighter 6 looks sick." I'm jumping back in this. Now you kids will understand what it means to play a real Street Fighter, which is exactly what happened with all of the OGs trying to get into Street Fighter 5, and then they couldn't do it after they skipped Street Fighter 4. <laughs> oh yeah, so it's interesting. Street Fighter 5 was a response to Street Fighter 4. So tap2.gg in the chat says, uh, the Street Fighter 6 feels like such a response to the Street Fighter 5 launch. Street Fighter 4 was a response to Street Fighter... Street Fighter 5 was a response to Street Fighter 4's gameplay. Right? They tried to do everything. They removed invul backdashes, made uppercuts really risky, tried to fix this with the priority system, and, you know, and you know, all this stuff here uh, that they tried to put into the game. No crouch techs, etc., etc. Then, for Street Fighter VI, it doesn't feel like a response to Street Fighter V's gameplay, but yes, feels like a response to the Street Fighter V uh, launch, which clearly... I mean, at this point in time, I don't think there's anybody on the planet that would even try to tell you that that Street Fighter V launch was even remotely, like, satisfying at all whatsoever. But, uh, again, the way that we are in this situation here, Street Fighter VI is giving us a bonanza of information. So many different things, so many one-player modes. They've been letting a bunch of people play the game and demo the game. I know Justin has a ton of videos and stuff, and I still haven't had to sit down and watch all these videos to see how the gameplay looks, but the gameplay looks really good. It seems like we're getting away from stubby buttons, etc., etc., but... 
you know, this is something that we'll talk about as we go through all the videos and all the information that I'm going to try to call together because I still don't know where they announced Bosch and I have no idea how everybody knows who Bosch is. And when I saw Bosch on Twitter, I was like, who is this character? <laughs> so uh, it's really strange. Like I've actually been having trouble keeping track of all the information. So I'm going to do two things. I'm just going to go through the Street Fighter Twitter list little by little to go over all the things that they've revealed and then I will also continue to go and then I will go into uh, their website and look at all the information that they uh, put in there. So uh, D Pendleton asked in the chat how many characters do you think SF6 will drop with? They've already said that the game is dropping with 18 characters and uh, they showed all 18 of them in a video clip uh, already. So uh, there was obviously a linked list, a leaked list, a linked list. That was the programmer in me, sorry. A leaked list of the player, of the characters. And uh, Street Fighter VI now definitely uh, showed all of the 18 launch characters. Now, some of the characters on that leaked list are not in that 18 launch, initial launch roster. However, for the sake of people who haven't been spoiled yet, I will not discuss anything about those other characters uh, to allow people to still enjoy being surprised if they haven't been uh, spoiled yet. So, uh, again, you know, first of all, before we even get into the hardcore information, I just kind of, like, again, it's going to be so interesting. So many people are hyped for this, bringing a lot of old school players back. Now, Street Fighter V turned out to be a very different game than previous Street Fighters. In fact, now that Street Fighter V has been around for like six, seven years now at this point, I really do honestly feel like it is the most different Street Fighter game out of them all. Like a lot of people have talked about, you know, Third Strike or Alpha 3 being the most different Street Fighter of all Street Fighters. I really do feel like Street Fighter V is the most different Street Fighter out of all the, the Street Fighter games. In fact, I've just been having a conversation with Sanford Kelly on this uh, on Twitter. But Street Fighter V is a very different game mentally. Like the strategy, the, 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 the things, the, the way that you want to play the game is very different. And it's very interesting. So what I'm curious about here is that Street Fighter Six, I'm feeling like is not going to be very Street Fighter V esque. I actually think it's going to be sim more similar to some of the older games based on what I've seen so far. Shout out to Minister of Defense, thank you for the sub. Uh, but again, like it feels a little different. So like I, I see some people confused by that by me saying Street Fighter V is a very different game. Yeah, Street Fighter V doesn't uh, reward the heart as much as it rewards the mind. Uh, Street Fighter V is a very, very study-heavy game. Alex Vice says it plays like an improved version of Street Fighter V. I don't know what that means. Because <laughs> Street Fighter V, frankly, is a fantastic game. I actually really love what it's become outside of... God, they still didn't buff Lucia enough. But, I mean, honestly, Street Fighter V is an excellent game where it's at right now. So, I... I, I I wouldn't necessarily improve, probably just different. And the reason why Vi probably feels that way is because he's an old school player. And so it's, as my guess is from seeing the footage so far, I feel like Street Fighter VI is leaning more back towards a little bit of the old school fighting game style. So a lot of people like Minister of Defense here talking about Street Fighter V is Math Fighter V. Yeah, that, there's definitely that inside joke. There's not a lot of uh, argument against it. There is a lot of math. There's a lot of studying in that game. And, um, you know, Daigo has talked about this before in which he has said that, you know, like Nuki is one of the greatest fighting game players of all time. He sucks at Street Fighter V. And even Daigo was like, Street Fighter V is a different game than the previous Street Fighters. Previous Street Fighters were about the speed of decisions that you make. And, and, and you know, just like always coming up with just decisions decisions it's like it's the it's the process of decision making whereas street fighter 5 a lot of the decision making is kind of built into the game for you based off of the frame data etc etc nuki one of the greatest japanese street fighter players of all time also one of the best japanese commentators please put him into street fighter 6 please put him into street fighter 6 at some point dlc nuki for commentator please 
uh, one of the best Chun Li's of all time in Third Strike, in Super Turbo, etc. He's one of the five Japanese gods of uh, Street Fighter, of fighting games. Yes, one of the best vampire savior players in Japan. One of Daigo's biggest rivals for the longest of time. Like, literally, Nuki and Daigo have been rivals for, like, their entire play cycle. Nuki is uh, one of the strongest fighting game players in Japan historically. And yes, he's awful at Street Fighter V. He can't play that game uh, at all. At all. And, um... Uh, Daigo's like, does that mean he's a bad fighting game player? Daigo's like, definitely not. It's just that he's lazy, is what Daigo said. Daigo said that Nuki is lazy and he doesn't want to study, so he can't play Street Fighter V. <laughs> it's funny, Necromancy Black says, I'm t I could tell you I'm turning off those commentators until they put in some meme mods. I'll tell you right now, when they first approached me, <laughs> to do the commentary for Street Fighter VI, my very first question to them was, you could turn us off, right? <laughs> that was my first question was, you could turn us off, right? So like, honestly, uh, just because, you know, I was thinking obviously when we commentate live, we're gonna want them off and stuff. And I've also joked too many times to people that I don't know if I could listen to myself for a long period of time. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, again, it's going to be really interesting. I mean, the tra the training mode, look, I, I don't want to be that guy, okay? I know I have a lot of influence in the FGC or whatever like that. I know I have uh, imposter syndrome. But so many things that they are putting into Street Fighter VI. Oh, thank you for the subscription, Dubu Domo. Uh, we're almost at a hype train. Let's get to a hype train. Uh, but... So many things that they're doing in Street Fighter 6. I swear, if you just look at a bunch of my old first attack and Chen, Chen reaction videos, I have talked about a lot of these things. <laughs> and they're putting it into the game. I don't know if it's me. Oh, thank you, Master of Defense and Lurker Spine, for the uh, bits as well. Getting up to... We've gotten to the level 1 hype train, but... Again, I don't know if, if they were listening to me or not, but like it's crazy how many ideas that I've talked about before that seem to have managed to get into the game, which is really funny. Uh, I mean, literally the, the training mode frame data thing we'll see a little later on looks exactly like the spreadsheets I've been doing. The extreme mode, I have talked about putting exactly that into a game. Anyways, we'll go through that one by one as we get through everything. Let's just get, uh, I mean, it's too late. <laughs> Long story short, too late. Uh, uh, let's actually just get into some of the uh, videos for this game here and some of the stuff that we've been seeing. Again, I'm just going to be going through Street Fighter's Twitter at first. Oh my god, Minister of Defense with the five gift subs. The Telephone, Cowboy, Lurker, Spine, Lionheart, Roar, AK, and Snake. Thank you, thank you. I don't remember where the video... I didn't see the video with my CVS2 reference. I need to go... Someone needs to link that to me, dude. I need to, I need to hear that, dude. I need to hear how it sounds in the game. <laughs> uh, but let's do this then. Let's actually get over here. So if I turn this on here... Yeah, I'm going to switch the camera view over here. Uh, to my fat ass over here. Oh boy, this pandemic has not treated me well. I look terrible on camera over here. Uh, but let's do this. And what we are going to do here is start with uh, the Street Fighter VI Bonanza. And of course, the, the no better way to do that than just starting with the initial trailer uh, that came out. Oh, dang, you actually saw that. Oh, you thought that yourselves, huh, Fanta and Super Moose? The moment I saw Extreme Mode, I thought that's what James Chen talked about. Dude, okay, see, I'm not the only, I'm not making it up. <laughs> I'm not making it up. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do like uh, Proximity Normals, Dubu Domo. I have a whole video on that again, but it's not going to happen, so we're not worried about it. Let's watch some Street Fighter VI. This is the initial announced trailer. And uh, that came out at TGS. And wow, we're at almost at a level four boost train. Thank you very much. But uh, let's do this. Let's start this. And then, like I said, we're going to watch it once with audio straight up. And then I will come back 
Watch it in slow motion with pausing on mute and we can discuss all of the cool things that we see here. So if you don't know who the initial eight, oh, actually, this is not the video with the initial 18 characters. We'll get there in a little bit. Thank you for more bits, Minister of Defense, for more of this boost train. Let's go. Street Fighter Keep 6. Coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Safety first, bud. There's so much of this trailer just makes me so happy. You my new recruit? Yeah. Gotta say, you're photogenic. Again, you can call me Luke. We're just coach. World tour. Let's go. First, get introduced. Right. Don't expect me to be four of the returning world warriors. I've watched this trailer at least. Oh. Ready. Now we know what that uh, weird uh, filter in Street Fighter V was about, by the way. But again, uh, everything about this trailer, just like I've watched this trailer at least like six or seven times. And every time I watch it, it's just like there's just so much happiness in my heart watching this thing because of just, like I said, the amount of content that they are throwing into this thing is just absolutely insane and I, like almost unparalleled. And again, the reason why we talk about Street Fighter V's launch, if you guys you know are unfamiliar with how that game launched, literally online mode and a survival mode. Like that was literally what the game launched with. This is literally all that the game launched with. And yes, we it was very poorly received. And a lot of people were very, very, very angry about it. But 
the most important thing about Street Fighter VI, let's not even talk about the love letter and all this stuff. I mean, like the, the, the apologies to for the Street Fighter launch or whatever like that. The one thing that I want to tell you right now is that, uh, again, it's not just the two, but Nakayama-san, Matsumoto-san, like, we've seen it in the fighting game roundtables from, uh, that Harada has put on, right? The roundtables. You can see it from Nakayama-san and Matsumoto-san. Those two are just so much of fighting game fans, right? They just love fighting games. Not even just Street Fighter. They love fighting games. And they have a very strong history with fighting games as well. And so... You know, we've seen it, for example, Naka, uh, Matsumoto-san, you know, he busts out his old, like, Street Fighter the movie soundtrack and all these other things during the, you know, during the presentation and stuff, uh, during the round tables and things like that. These guys are big fans. I, and Matsumoto-san, he had, like, the whole Street Fighter movie, like, uh, he bought it himself, the whole Street Fighter, uh, the, the animated movie, like, uh, you know, um, storyboard book or whatever like that, dude, like... There's so much love that these guys have for fighting games. And so when you watch Street Fighter VI and see everything that they have done as a callback and as a love letter, and it's interesting because there's two ways that this always comes off, right? There are people who put in references to be cheeky, to be like, yeah, look, I get it, I know the reference, ha <laughs> ha. But then there's the people that there's just something about the way it's presented that you can tell that the people are putting in the references just because they love it. They don't care if you ever figure it out or find out about it. It's just there because that's their appreciation for it. Like that is the level I feel like that Nakayama and Matsumoto-san are, are putting into this game. The subtle touches that they have been putting all over this game, and you can see it, and we'll see a bunch of them even just in this trailer, is amazing. And it's just, like, you can see that these two are oozing with passion. And that is the direction. I don't even want to, like, I don't, I'm not even worried about the gameplay. I'm not even worried about the net code or whatever like that right now. This is all I'm just talking about seeing what they are doing as just as a love letter uh, is amazing. And again, yes, as I mentioned earlier, Renato, obviously uh, it's the whole team. It's the whole team. And uh, I can't just only, obviously Nakayama and Matsumoto are like two of the main guys that I know the names of. <laughs> so I can call them out specifically. But again, how much of it is uh, based on them? Probably a lot, honestly. So... Dude, if they put... Oh, God, we'll talk about that lurker spine. But here we start off with this. I'll put the volume very low so you can kind of hear it. We start off here. This might be... Uh, so this is something that obviously Olaf and Kitty will point out a lot. But they they have noted a lot of like little Fatal Fury references. Uh, KOF, SNK ties uh, to in, this tr in these trailers. Uh, and uh, again... Like Matsumoto-san, I said one of his favorite fighting game characters of all time is Kenso from KOF. Again, these guys just love all fighting games. I haven't seen the Fatal Fury 2 anime, but when I saw the clip, like, you can't, you almost can't deny that this is just a reference to that opening where Terry saves a construction worker from a bunch of falling girders. And here Ken, like, saving a worker at a construction site because of girders being knocked around and stuff like that i mean it's it's almost impossible to deny that there is some ties there but again uh also love so when i said if they're gonna make street fighter 6 how would i make street fighter 6 i said take a concept and run with the concept don't worry about the past games do something come up with an idea and make that your game and what we've seen right now with them diving into Metro City and really taking this kind of urban feel for Street Fighter, almost bringing it back to the streets, as you want to call it, 
I mean, everything about the presentation of Street Fighter Six, and again, I mean, look, I know I'm gonna be gushing a lot on this stream, okay? And it's gonna be very, very easy to be like, James, you're a shill because you're in the game, you wanna commentate the game, you're gonna get paid by Capcom to do commentary. All of that is true, but I will try my best honestly to let you know that a lot of my enthusiasm in this for this game is genuine this is a very very genuine reaction here because i will tell you i i like i've been playing fighting games for like 30 freaking years so like my passion for this right now and i like i said i will be gushing a lot is not because of this kind of bias kind of thing or this kind of shill thing like that. I love all the fighting games, right? I've been trying to, I trying to get people to play DNF Duel for Christ's sakes, you know, because I think that game is amazing. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I am genuinely excited for this. And like I said, this trailer makes me smile in a way that is not in indicative of just being like yo this is great for me to make money you know this is literally me just being like my god this is such a love letter this is such a love letter and it, it, yeah it reaches my heart like tiny tech says and again look if you don't believe me if you don't believe me and you think i'm shilling <laughs> more power to you go for it I'm not convincing you one way or the other, okay? I'm not convincing you one way or the other. And I keep looking at that camera, but this is the camera I should be looking at. I keep gesturing towards that camera because that's what I'm used to. I should be gesturing to this camera over here. But let's keep going over here. Again, love the urban theming. And as someone else said, this trailer almost kind of makes me like Luke. Yes, Luke is absolutely a douchebag and I love it. But, like, the way that he is in this trailer kind of seems like it makes more sense. It makes more sense, you know? <laughs> like, his personality is shining a lot more in this, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we got to go through all the different costume yeah, options over here. So we've got <laughs> Hobo Ken. <laughs> Hobo Ken or Hobo Ryu or something. Hobo Fighter over here. Uh, Let's see. Uh, standard uh, fighting chick. Yeah. Martial arts ninja dude. Renoa? <laughs> Renoa in a top hat? I don't know. <laughs> a lot of people said Tung Fu Ru. Tung Fu Ru because he does the spinning bird kick later. So it looks like a Tung Fu Ru thing. Uh, cat ears fighting girl. Bald Akuma, dude. Bald Akuma. I love it. I should be watching these on YouTube because I have a lot more uh, control options on YouTube. But Bald Akuma makes me laugh. Not Bald Akuma, but Cut Hair uh, Akuma. Business Haircut. Kmart Akuma. Netflix Akuma. That's what it is. It's Netflix Akuma. <laughs> Netflix Akuma right here. Oh, man. Super tall Elena. Ch Elena in a leather jacket. Uh, metal dude. <laughs> metal man. Uh, Dural. <laughs> and then this is the character that they use for a lot of the trailer over here. But again, this is just showing you a lot of the options. And again, we've never had a character creation mode in the uh, scope of... Uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, the RE engine. So it's going to be really interesting the kind of characters that we can create. And uh, uh, it's going to be kind of neat. I think it's going to be uh, fun. And again, the fact that they're doing this much work for World Tour is such a wonderful thing. And again, you know, back to that whole shill concept again. I've told this story many times. When Street Fighter V came out, and all my friends asked me if they should buy Street Fighter V. I told them no, okay? So if I am a shill for Street Fighter, I'm doing a terrible job. Like I literally told my brother, my friends, a bunch of people I knew, don't buy Street Fighter V. I literally told them there's nothing in the game for them, right? 
this game here, I will tell people to buy this game. Like, I will go to my brother. I will go to all those same friends, same friends and go like, yeah, buy this game because you will have so much stuff to do and it'll be awesome and it'll be amazing. And this world tour mode, I mean, just yeah, the things that they've showed in here already. And again, <laughs> like, I, I, I like the fact that they're leaning into the fact that, yes, Luke is their main protagonist. And so what do you think they would do? Serious fight or whatever? No, like their main protagonist is actually, like I said, he's just kind of an idiot, right? Like, I don't feel like they're doing anything to present him as like some sort of like, I am honorable or like I'm respect like he's actually just kind of a <laughs> he's like a jerk almost like I don't even want to call him a cocky jerk, but he's just like he's just like <laughs> like you he's he's kind of here so you can kind of laugh at him. That's how it feels to me. He's not meant to be taken seriously. Like, he is here to kind of be laughed at. Like, with his Hadouken taunt to Ryu. If you guys actually haven't seen that, right? His taunt to Ryu is he goes, Hadouken, Hadouken. And, like, does this, like, really goofy Hadouken pose. <laughs> and he says it all American accent and cheesy, dude. It's so great. I love it. I love it. Uh, who knows <laughs> what, what, how his arms have gotten so thick, dude. Um, uh, do, 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 do. oh, already taken care of. Thank you. All right, let's continue forward. Luke, we're just, coach. just coach. And here we go. World tour. And again, just, you know, it's not only just like, okay, let's make this take place in, uh, Metro City. I mean, what a perfect background for them to take to put in a world tour like this, an open world kind of format, just just leaning into the Metro City, even having a Hagger Stadium here. Again, Hagger being the original mayor of Metro City, former champ, former Street Fighter champion previous to Sagat. If, if that's the lore is correct, it was Hagger, and then he retired, Sagat became the new champion, then Ryu eventually took over. And so in Metro City, their stadium is named after their former mayor. So, uh... Oh yeah, that's right, that Street Fighter has that font. And look at this, a Masters building. Ken Masters has his own office tower in here. Has this been where his corporate building has been this whole entire time? Is this is this where his corporate building has always been? Because uh, Masters has always been, you know, Ken has always been the rich businessman, right? So uh, they they we we got that cleared up. We got that fixed. Ken is not a hobo. I mean, for the reasons that we originally thought. So. But again, I mean, look, they've got a pier, lighthouse, like you're obviously gonna be able to run through all these things. There's like just random people fighting. I'm wondering how much of this can be interactive with other people online or if this is just gonna be a solo thing. I'm not sure. And you know, obviously like, you know, the, 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 the models and everything, the graphics aren't gonna be like, you know, super high, 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 crazy level here, anything like that. But there's like, they said like all three of the modes they highlighted here are like three full games. And so they are putting a lot of work uh, into this. So uh, I, I, I appreciate like how much of this they're doing and how, and how much they're putting into this. I mean, look at all these environments that you can go to. This is probably like a Chun-Li's Chun temple or something like that. I don't know. Um, cause obviously you could fight Chun-Li later on, but like just looking at all these backgrounds and everything like that, it's just like so many things that you're going to be able to run around and see. And I just got to wonder how many inside jokes they're going to have in this. Like there's going to be so many references that they're probably going to put in here. Right. And they flash through these scenes so fast over here. Uh, let me make sure. Uh, the Metro City PD, this is where Lucia works. Maybe Lucia will be just chilling in there. House of Magic and Illusion. Illusion. Sh sh oh, oh, I don't know what this is a reference to. <laughs> I don't know what this is a reference to. But something. And it looks like a lot of the Neo Mad Gear gang are going to be people walking around with these cardboard boxes on their head. Because from what we've seen, is this dude falling down? Is this dude doing the, um, God, what is it? It's the Scarlett Johansson pose, right? 
I don't know if you guys saw the meme that some paparazzi got a picture of Scarlett Johansson like falling down and people like did the Photoshop memeing of it. But that's what this guy is making me think of over here is the Scarlett Johansson thing. <laughs> oh, man. And then uh, the Honda. This looks like, wasn't this the Street Fighter Cross Tekken background or something? Wasn't this, uh, thank you, Investigation Cone, thank you. Yeah, this is the Sodom truck thing and stuff that was in the, um, this is in the Alpha 3 background, that's right. This is Sodom's truck. And they're all wearing the Sodom shirts. Dude, I actually did not notice that they were all wearing, like, the Sodom shirts and stuff like that in Alpha 2. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, dang. Oh, God, that's so cool. Look at all these Sodom shirts and everything. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> That's really cool. <clears throat> oh man, okay, let's keep going here. I mean, that's uh, that's one of the reasons why I predict why Saddam will never come back in a game because of that name. I mean, they honestly could change his name to Katana and at least that has a lore reason for naming him that way, so. <laughs> but Drippin' Style, this is obviously the store where you can buy all your clothes, all that glitters, I don't know who this is up here, but yeah, this is the Hugo Billboard Giant Attack. In case you guys don't know, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact was subtitled, another subtitle, Giant Attack. So it was Street Fighter 3 New Generation, Street Fighter 2 Second Impact Giant Attack. That was the full name of the game. So uh, that's basically uh, what this is a reference to. And then there's just some model up here. I don't know who is the, who that is. So, but that's what the reference to that is. Um, and then of course, all the different clothes that you can buy here, different hats. Look at the little tiger jacket that this guy has. All the different shirts. You can do shirt, suit, and tie if you want to. You could change your shoes. So again, it's just really cool how they did all this. But then this, this part is the part that's now starting to become like, this is what a world tour should be like. Like if you're gonna be running around and you have all of these special moves, to actually use the special moves as movement is so cool. So we've got the Dalsam teleport. He actually says yoga and teleports over here. We've got someone hadoukening some cans on the street. What does that say? Metro sports, Metro sports. Okay. There's some birds flying in the background. What does that say? Something planet can't read what that first word says. It almost looks like Squall Planet, but I'm not sure. Uh, but this one right here, using the spinning bird kick to make it over. Now, as a person who knows about the spinning bird kick, I don't feel like she's gonna make it. <laughs> like, I feel like this is gonna run out before she makes it over there. Uh, spoilers, she makes it. We definitely saw this in another uh, trailer. <laughs> We definitely see this in another trailer. Uh, but again, like using spinning bird kick to like traverse the land and to get to other locations. We'll see later on. This is Blanca's EX electricity. And it's so cool. This guy has a Capcom varsity jacket on. And then obviously knocks him over here. But uh, meet the new you final fight. What is this? What is this? The fashionist fight? Is that what that say? Dog gone, some dog stuff. Metro Sip Cafe. There's a Street Fighter thing over here. Experience, get them. Shoes look like fake Converse's. This is obviously Chun-Li Cosmetics here. Cosmetics by, it probably says Chun-Li. Starry Snowball, Metro City, create your experience here. Uh, that's the Hakan one, right? Metro City, advertising the Battle Hub. Something bespoke something or other. Oh, no, this is it. The Hakan perfume up here. Godspeed Roadsters. Dude, they are putting in so many things into this game. It's wild. Like, it's just, I mean, what is, come on into Metro City's number one beauty uh, style lab. 
Oh, so there's a beauty salon. So you probably run in here. This is where maybe you could change your hairstyles or something like that. Right. That's what it feels like, Rio's space. It's like Street Fighter has gone from being this crazy underground, like, oh my God, Street Fighter Bison is going to take the Illuminati. And this is taking place after Street Fighter 3. And it feels like it's starting to lean more into the KOF kind of concept where this is just a worldwide known tournament. Right, that now all of a sudden people are becoming fans of because the internet is getting bigger and stuff like that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when it comes to Blanca, okay? We'll talk a little bit more about that when it comes to Blanca. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see here. And then, of course, in front of the Hager Stadium, in world tour mode, you got to imagine that you're just going to be able to fight random people here. This guy clearly has Luke's move set here, fighting here. And of course, now all the people walking around become the guys in the background cheering for you. And look at all these like, oh, it's Ken's boat. It's Ken's boat from Super and Super Street Fighter 2. Super Street Fighter 2 and Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. This is the modernized boat. That's Ken's boat in the background. With like Ken on the, with, with, with Q on it. That's actually his boat. <laughs> Was the crab sign there before? Was the crab sign? Have we seen this crab sign before? Because it looks super familiar. <laughs> This crab sign looks familiar. It was in that game. Okay, okay. I can't remember now. It's from Second Impact. Got it. Okay. There you go. Uh, dang, that's so cool. Oh, there you go. Let's take a look at this here. Battle Harbor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, it's a, it looks like a different boat, but uh, it, this one's more of the Street Fighter Three vein. That's the more Street Fighter 3 vein uh, uh, kind of the boat right there. Yeah, that's what it is. It looks like a Red Bull logo. That's what it is. So it might be Red Crab. Might be the Red Crab energy drink. Anyways, girl with the top hat is beating up on dude in sailor outfit. And again, love the fact that you can be... A and look, <laughs> dude, there's another sailor. This sailor outfit dude is watching his buddy get beat up, dude. <laughs> Red Crab gives you claws. <laughs> Do you feel like you don't have the strength to make it through the day? Red Crab gives you claws. Please, we need to turn that into a thing. Red Crab gives you claws, dude. That's the way it works. Tatsu, and then here we go, Tung Furu doing the spinning bird kick, and to which Olaf swears this has, like, Tung Furu has a move where he spins, and so they got this old man to do it. He says that this has to be a Tung Fu Ru throwback here, having him do the spinning bird kick. But as you can see in the world tour mode, you're just beating up on a bunch of dudes with box heads, basically. There you go. And then uh, uh, Netflix Akuma getting the big drive rush, headbutting somebody just randomly, flash kicks. Show you. Wait, hang on a second. Go back here for a second. Godspeed Roadsters. We saw that sign already. Show you kids. And this is Jury's move, isn't it? Jury's move, and she's hitting a bunch of drones. She's hitting a bunch of drones. What the hell? What the heck is going on here? And then this is the one I am so much confused by. You are getting beat up by air hockey paddles. You are literally getting beat up by air hockey paddles in here. What is this? <laughs> by Roombas, dude. But this, Subway, Final Fight reference. This is 100% Final Fight stage. This is one of the Final Fight stages right here where you are running in the, in the train and having all this stuff. Like, there is no question to me that this is absolutely a throwback to that final fight stage. Uh, absolutely. And here you go, beating up on more of these uh, Mad Gear people in the background. And then someone actually pointed out, this is, and I did not catch this, this is the bonus stage parry background from Street Fighter 3. There's a parry, uh, there's a parry bonus game in the Street Fighter 3 games where Sean throws basketballs at you, and this is a recreation of that stage. Straight up, that this dunk 
board, this dunk sign is actually just there. Like, it's so crazy. Like I said, the, the, the reference, like, they culled through so many things. Like, we've seen in the character select, Chun Li sitting on the luggages is a throwback. Ken's wind pose is a throwback. And we'll see some more throwbacks in this trailer again. They have done so many things for like little throwbacks and references and stuff like that. It's so crazy. And yeah, 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 here we go. Thank you, uh, Investigation Cone. Uh, again, one of the best Google Foo guys that I know out there. But yeah, see the dunk sign, even the metal girder up here, the, 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 the art back here and everything like that. So yeah, you can see clearly a throwback to that, obviously from a different angle, but if we were looking more straightforward onto it, it would look almost exactly the same. Yeah, exactly. Street Fighter Six is a love letter to Capcom fans, not just Street Fighter. In fact, that last stage that they had for Street Fighter Five with all the Capcom references in the background was kind of like a preview what they're doing with this. Oh, dude, Act Remix, I will get there because I will, oh God, like, we'll talk about that, Act Remix. We will talk about that. We will maybe even sing about that, dude, so. But again, here's this Chinatown area in Metro City. Okay, so the other one was probably, like you guys said, the Sumo Stadium. But look at how beautiful this is. And Chun-Li's just chilling here. You walk up, you talk with her, and then you get to train with her. With Ryu watching in the background, being like, judging you. Ryu is ju silently judging you in the background, dude. <laughs> yeah, Tai Chi. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, it's so neat. And then we get into the new characters here. Blanca reveal. And I don't even know what the context of this is, but that's probably you running into Blanca in the game. But like the fact that they're actually putting in like comic book words here like this, Verzact is like the greatest thing ever, honestly. Now I will say, Blanca definitely has leaned in more into this gorilla stuff. Uh, no, Tai Chi isn't just for old folks, Renato. Come on. Haven't you seen Shaolin Soccer? Don't you understand? In Shaolin Soccer, Tai Chi was the key to winning. Instead of fighting the force, you take the force and then you revert it back at them. That's how they win. <laughs> uh, I don't really like the way Blanca looks, but again, uh, I didn't like the way Akuma looks in Street Fighter V. And now I can't stand Street Fighter IV Akuma, and I think Street Fighter V Akuma looks awesome. So who knows? Maybe this Blanca will actually uh, uh, grow on me after some time. I don't like the leaning in on the gorilla kind of look, but you know, I, I kind of preferred him just being this <laughs> und undisclosed monster look. But uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I do like the outfit though, but Dalsim. I mean, Dalsim, I mean, one of the craziest things about Dalsim is how much they're really leaning into his age. Like, you'll see in some of the other videos later on, like, they've definitely uh, uh, aged him, but he looks so beautiful, dude. Like, like, look at this, look at this pose here, dude. This is so sick, dude. But then Honda showing up here, and now Fighting Ground. So Fighting Ground, I'm assuming, it's probably gonna be the arcade mode, training mode, you know, the versus mode, survival mode, whatever like that. If all those things are included, we don't know yet, but the Street Fighter Six made Honda look really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, like here they all are here. Dalsum. And they and it's funny too, because Dalsum. The very first time Dalsum ever got kind of like like jelly style was actually SVC Chaos. Like SVC Chaos, SNK was the first company that turned Dalsum more into jelly arms. And then they kind of leaned into that in five a little bit. And now here in six, he's way more jelly armed than he ever was before. So, uh, 
But here we go, starting off with Blanca here. We get E Honda back to the mix. I think Ken looks cool, okay? I actually kind of like this look for Ken. And obviously, it's definitely a huge improvement over what we had in Street Fighter V. So I actually like it. But, you know, one thing that I was scared of was that Street Fighter V. A Street Fighter 6 originally I thought was gonna lean really really hard into trying to be as realistic as possible but this face is still pretty cartoony like the proportions and the way the face look still looks has this animated look so we're kind of avoiding that uncanny valley so I, I actually really like the way Ken looks uh, in this in this and then here we go we see some of his gameplay funky kicks are back but actually useful. <laughs> they actually gave him funky kicks. And then Dalsam C. And this, what I'm talking about, the jelly arms. Like, up to Street Fighter 4, Dalsam had always been straight and then retract, straight and then retract. But he's gotten more into this kind of thing now. And this is really the first time that we've seen this. And this throw animation? Oh, God. What? Like... This is the sickest throw animation ever. <laughs> That's so cool. What is Dal Blanca doing here? What is Blanca doing here? <laughs> he has like some sort of command grab where he slams your face into the ground. He has an air throw now? <laughs> Does this guy have an air throw? <laughs> this is crazy. And then he headbutts you, and then Honda chop, blam, still has his target combo. Ken still with the hurricane kick, as we expected. And then uh, Dalsam with the yoga flame, o Oicho throw. Everyone calls it the Ochio throw. That's actually wrong. It is the Oicho throw. O-I-C-H-O, Oicho throw is the correct name of it. Blanca ball, and that's Blanca's background from Street Fighter 2! That's Blanca's background from Street Fighter 2. Uh, why did I just never pay attention to this until just now? Even the snake is there. The snake is there. Holy crap. Dude, if Blanca is actually in Brazil, I still think that if they make Blanca speak Portuguese, that would be the sickest thing. If he actually spoke Portuguese in this game, it would be the sickest thing, dude. Like, just give him some Portuguese dialogue, and the Brazilian players in the, in the FGC will just be like, that would be the best thing ever, dude. They would love it. They would love it. Right, Blanca's a tour guide in the rainforest in Brazil. We'll get there. We'll get there, Hasun. This is going to be a long stream, I'm telling you right now. Air Blanca Ball, Air Blanca Ball. Hey, 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 let me ask you guys this right now. What was the first video game to give Blanca an Air Blanca Ball, huh? Let's see if anybody can actually answer this question here. What is the first fighting game that gave Blanca, okay, official, not Rainbow Edition, but what is the first fighting game, official fighting game that gave Blanca a, uh, air, any form of Air Blanca Ball, just any sort of Air Blanca Ball? Uh, actually was, uh, Street Fighter EX. Street Fighter EX, you could block a ball and then cancel into the super where he runs down and slashes you. So yeah, Dubu Domo <laughs> got it. There you go. EX, he had an air block a ball. Oh man, here we go. And then Ken target combo into this run kick into this move, which is a side switch. And then the clip that made so many people's hearts break. Like I felt, I felt the 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 soul of millions of people cry out <laughs> when I saw this, because Dawson does an air fireball into teleport, <laughs> air fireball into left right mix up. <laughs> I def, dude, I have, I had never seen so much salt. Like, that was probably the one most negative thing that I saw on the internet was all the Street Fighter V players who saw this and were like, no, no, I, I, <laughs> oh my god. Oh, and look at the jumping heavy punch, dude. It's so curvy. And again, I apologize. I'm using the Twitter video. Actually, let me see if I can just switch to the YouTube video here. Uh, is this the YouTube video here? No, this is, uh, 
I should switch to the YouTube video because it's going to be that much clearer. Uh, let's go to youtube.com slash street fighter. This should be the right one here. Uh, yeah, this is the one right here because the quality on this one. Yeah, we're going to get 4k quality here. So apologies that we've been doing it on the bad quality. this whole time. Oh my God, it's loud. Okay, here we go. Yeah, much clearer here, much clearer here. So here we go, Dalsa, and then uh, actually let's go back a little bit to here again because we missed a couple of things. I went too far forward, here we go. Dalsa, there's that beautiful throw, there's the air throw here with Blanca, target combo, Tatsu, and then uh, that Oicho throw, the Blanca stuff, target combo into the turnaround, and then the, the, the scream of a million voices crying and then being silenced. I mean, Dalsum the Zoner is back. Dalsum the Zoner is back. Oh, God. Uh, what is that? What is that that Honda is doing there? Because that doesn't look like uh, an EX, right? Is that just his hand slap now? Is that just what his hand slap does? And now, Blanca pulling out a little Blanca Chan, tossing it out, setting it into electricity, and then hopping over you, and then beast rolling you out of the air. Oh God. And here we go, Ken doing EX funky kicks over here into the super, and again, again, Oh my god, this, this, just for the Shippu Jinrai Kak, the third strike callbacks here. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure I agree with, I think Ken is actually going to be kind of sick. I do miss the heavy Tatsu. Street Fighter V's heavy Tatsu is still one of the coolest things ever, uh, honestly. Okay, here we go, here we go. This is where, what I'm looking for. Activates the super. That lightning strike behind him? This lightning strike behind him? And then the lightning strike across? Like, dude, anyone who's played Third Strike has seen this about a gazillion times. This is exactly what his super looks like in Street Fighter III Third Strike. It shoots a lightning down. It shoots a lightning across. That is exactly what it looks like. And so when they were like, you know what? M immortalized in, uh, you know, moment 37... Let's just throw it all back in here. Dude. I mean, <laughs> Justin literally tweeted. He was like, man. <laughs> There's that fake Hugo in the background. I don't know if that's Poison or Roxy back there. That might be Roxy petting a cat. Petting a cat, mind you. Um, yeah, and or one of the other ones over there. It's just a bunch of dudes hanging out on the balconies over here. It's awesome. And then, okay, this, the other moment of uh, absolute people getting terrified. Dalsum old heavy kick coming back in. Look at this pose, dude. It's so sick. Whoa, that's so weird how that looks. What is this like weird swirl here? That's so weird looking. <laughs> but kick into drive cancel. Full combo. Now, I will say this, based on what we've seen for the game, okay? Drive cancels cost three bar, a drive rush costs three bars. 
That's obviously not a confirm over there, right? That was just kicking her in the face. Now, obviously, if you punish something from full screen away, it can be a confirm. But remember, if you do this, it does drain half of your drive gauge. And so you could put yourself in a very, very bad position, uh, lo lo losing some of your drive gauge here. Uh, drive rushes are very powerful in this game, but they're very expensive for a reason. It'll be really interesting to see how this balances out, how fast the meter recovers, etc., etc., and see if something like this becomes super, super, uh, like, like, does this become the meta? Does this become the meta that now drive rush is what everybody's doing, you know, with the pseudo Vi CCs that we've seen, et cetera, et cetera. Or is it too expensive that every time you're wrong, you're so close to guard breaking, so close to being exhausted that it's kind of scary. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes for sure. So, um... Yeah, the, the Tatsus in Street Fighter VI do look a little odd. Everybody has pointed that out. And I agree. It, it definitely looks more like they're just kind of floating and spinning. Uh, so there's something about them. I do miss Ken's heavy Tatsu but uh, uh, from Street Fighter V because I still think it's one of the sickest Tatsus ever. <laughs> the heavy Tatsu. Uh, well, I mean, we, we're getting a follow-up of, of G and Q uh, Rio space, so we're getting a, a follow-up already, so but yeah, you can see Dalsum's wife in the background chilling over here uh, Forgot what her name is, but here we go uh, drive rush cancel into some sort of EX lift Blanca doing some sort of throw thing into a super And then Ken getting hit by a bull And then Ken getting hit by a bull And Ken getting hit by a bull, a bull, produced probably one of my favorite memes. <laughs> oh shoot, how did I unmute that? Whoops, sorry. Uh, created one of my favorite memes, which was this. <laughs> Like, this is just amazing, dude. Amazing. Shout out to, to uh, Hike Craft. If this is, uh, yeah, I mean, he's it's an artist, so hopefully this is directly his art. But this is amazing here. But yes, so in case you guys don't remember, I had talked about this in a first attack stream in which I said, uh, not a first attack, in a Chen Reaction stream, that I wanted fighting games to bring casual modes in there with items, like make give you unblockable fireballs or make it so your anti-airs are particularly strong. Like, you know, anti-air DPs do three times damage, like picking up items like in Smash Brothers just to give casual players ways to win against better players. And also, like, if you think about that, like my idea was like fireballs become unblockable. Now you learn how to neutral jump fireballs, right? Because if you jump forward over fireballs the entire time, you just get DP'd all day and so you learn to start neutral jumping fireballs like interesting little mechanics like that would have helped now that's going to take a lot of work i don't think that they went that far but uh what they've done here is make this extreme mode here and again when we look at some of the later videos you'll see the the even the meters are very different in these modes it's not just like there's like a tug of war battle system i think there might be a knockdown count system like whoever gets the this number of knockdowns first wins etc cetera, etc cetera. there's a lot of that in here but yeah this is obviously met metal from uh the mega man games here and he just has the ability to hit you and explode and give you combos this is a lot like world heroes okay world heroes the game itself actually had like electrified ring edges and weird things like that but here we go like this zaps both of them these unblockable bombs and then like it wall bounced <laughs> But yeah, uh, definitely a lot of that. But then we go into the battle hub. The battle hub here. This is like, is this actually gonna be how it looks when you win a game? 
in like Street Fighter or like are they gonna replay it and transition this? Is this just for the video edit? Is this just for a trailer edit? I'm not sure. But whatever this is, when we learn more about this battle hub, it just gets sicker and sicker and sicker. Like, I, again, I like the Guilty Gear lobby system. I like the Guilty Gear lobby system. I think it was very poorly implemented. I think it was very, very poorly implemented. However, this actually is starting to look like, and I talked about this in the Guilty Gear one. I said, you should be able to have people walk up to the machines and watch, and you see all of the people, like you should just be able to walk up to any machine and just start watching. And then that way, if there's a particularly good match in the lobby, more people will start watching it, and then you'll be running around the battle hub and see this crowd around a machine, and you'll be like, what's going on? Because for those of you who did not actually exist in the arcades days, that is exactly how it worked. When you were in the arcade and there was like six machines, a crowd would gather around one of them and everybody would run to go watch. And then the other machines would get abandoned. Like, this actually happened a lot. And so if that's the concept that they have here, if that's what's actually happening here, shout out to the stage here, by the way. Got Mega Man sprites over here, dude. Like, <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> and here you go, hub goods shop. So you can probably buy stuff here. But here we go, walking through the battle hub, showing that obviously with your character in world tour mode, probably you can just walk in here, say you have emotes that you can use for people over here. They're, they might be playing one of the random matches in this battle hub on monitors at all, the to at all times. And then see how like people are watching here? I really hope this is something that you can do. Again, I'm not gonna get my hopes up. This is prob this may or may not happen, but it would be really sick if you could actually kind of see some of the matches on the screen a little. Oh no, that's just a frozen picture there. But still, if you actually can walk up and watch and now the Ring of Destiny stages kind of make sense here. We've got all this stuff going on in the background here. So a lot of the training, and see, like, is this real? Like, is this? Everybody is spectating this match. If this is what is this is everybody spectating this match like Oh my god, it's just like please. Imagine built-in online tournament features. Avatar walk up to a counter to register for their matches, then assign the locked arcade cabinets and designated area. Yeah, so they could do a lot of really cool stuff like that. And it's just, the potential is immense in my opinion. But if this really is like, people can gather around, like it just so happens Maximilian is in the lobby and he's playing against other people. Now all these people can just run up and you'll just see this crowd and you'll be like, why is this happening? And everybody can go watch it. By the way, Olaf has pointed out that this guy looks exactly like Robert Garcia. <laughs> like he's colored like Robert Garcia over here. But all these people chilling here like this. And then like tournament mode, there's clearly a tournament mode in this battle hub and you're actually sitting here and they'll play the tournament on the big screen. But yeah, look at this Robert Garcia, look, Robert Garcia looking mofo over here. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I mean, this could just be a whole tournament thing. We've got a Ryu pose here. Chun-Li win pose. By the way, that video of Jury's perfect win pose making fun of Chun-Li is like the, oh God. like the way she does the pose and then at the end she's just like face palms and laughs about it is so amazing. Zangief jump roundhouse from the old days. Hadouken. I don't even know what the hell this is. Dude, Max Cringe Jury is like my favorite thing right now. I have never been a fan necessarily of like Jury as a personality type. She was too spot on femme fatale for me. But the fact that they've actually turned her into this like 
just absolutely insane person who just thinks everybody else is really stupid and is just like the biggest jerk is just amazing. Isn't that Thor? <laughs> Isn't that Thor from Love and Thunder? <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't know what the DJ booth is. I don't know what this has to do with anything. Look at this guy, definitely a hagger mofo. Someone just dressed as Blanca Chan over here. It's amazing. And then, yes. Captain Commando. This is Volpus. I can't tell what this game is over here. This game, my, I think, is Sansan. This is Final Fight over here. Volgus is what it's called. That's what it was. But the Battle Hub is gonna have you ability to play old Capcom video games? What? What? In the Battle Hub, just to chill, maybe even while you're waiting for your ranked match? They let you play these things? Dude. Dude. It... Like... Right? Shenmue. But Shenmue. But like putting it in like in this kind of environment is like ridiculous, dude. Some person said put Saturday Night Slam Masters in here. I know Olaf agrees with you, so uh, he will be there. But yeah, like, it looks like you could sit down in chairs and watch like it's like some sort of Evo or something like that. But here's a super, some JoJo looking super over here now. Dalsum's actually JoJoing you, dude. And then Blanca chewing you and then electrocuting you. Oh god, doing the, uh, doing the, uh, Bucky from MVCI. <laughs> Bucky from MVCI with the... Fist drag on the ground, you know, Ugh, into the Shinryuken. Dude, again, what do we got here? They said all three of these modes are supposed to be like almost full video games themselves. That's how much content they put in here is what they said. So Fighting Ground, Battle Hub, World Tour, Street Fighter 6. And again, this is just ridiculous, dude. And then, I don't know what, like, bonus stages here, but, like, now we know what that pixelated mode from uh, Street Fighter V is all about. That it was just them experimenting with it, maybe trying to find bugs or something, but destroy a car, sure enough. And again, this game will be out on pretty much everything, right? PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, and Steam, obviously no Switch because Switch probably just can't uh, do that, so. Uh, so again, K-John, that's not a, a Tekken arcade cabinet thing. That's just something that arcades started to do. Once you actually started gaining crowds, like people used to crowd around watching Dragon's Lair, for example. It happened to me when I was a kid. I beat Dragon's Lair when I was like seven years old, sitting on a, standing on a stool so I could reach the joystick. And I'm this little kid at the arcade beating Dragon's Lair. And I got this giant crowd, but there was actually a monitor on top of the arcade cabinets that people would put up there so that crowds could watch it up there. A lot of fighting game tournaments started adding that uh, later on because on the big boy cabinet people wanted to watch as well and so you could watch up there instead of having to do the whole move your head i can't see you know kind of thing so <laughs> but that's that's dude this trailer has already shown us so much and it's ridiculous so let's uh scroll down here that was five days ago so let's take a look at a few of the other things that come up over here. Uh, what I'm going to do here is, uh, actually, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do this, but what I'll do here, uh, whoa, Tekken, no, 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 no. Fighter, Twitter, Twitter view, let's do this here. Street Fighter Twitter view, okay. So let's see, this is, uh, what was it? Yeah, five, 15th is five days ago here. So here we go. This is a lot of the information that we're going to go through here little by little by little, starting from here. They also finally introduced two more commentators, uh, which is awesome here. I mean, 
apparently uh this dude over here is like super famous uh commentator i think uh how do i get to the youtube page from here uh, I guess I can't. Oh, well, whatever. This is still on YouTube here, so I still have the control over the links, right? Or, nope, I don't. Uh, let's actually just go to the YouTube page itself. I don't have the right view up. I apologize. I'll get that in just a second. Here we do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. He's a singer. Let's see, what's funny is back when I was like 10, because of a huge crowd around MVC2 at an arcade, I then moved over to an open machine with less of a crowd, and that's how I discovered King of Fighters 98. That's exactly how it worked, Kumatori. Like, that's exactly why so many people in the old arcade days played multiple fighting games. Because we all ha just went and played other games while we waited. That's just how it worked. And that's what makes it, um, that's what created us to play multiple games and why we developed these skills. And, you know, there was definitely tribalism back then, but we definitely had more players spread around. Again, people don't remember that Alex Vi was the Tekken 3, I think it was, national champion. He, like, literally won the Tekken 3 National Champion. He was the best player at uh, MVC2 for the longest of time in Southern California and stuff like that. Like, people don't remember these things, but that's because we played everything. We played everything back then. I didn't. I played mostly Capcom games because I was, uh, I, I just, uh, that's how I was. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I never, I didn't go to Pac-Man that often. I think I might have only been there once or twice, but that was a very famous arcade. One of the biggest Street Fighter hubs in Southern California, uh, Pac-Man Arcade in Pasadena. But we have two new commentators here. I'll leave the volume all the way up. よろしくお願いします。あと開幕ドライブインパクトが噛み合いました。技を振らせて見事なパニッシュカウンター。オーバーバイパーツで火力を上げていきます。ファウルと状態ドライブはできない。ここは後ろに下がって。指でキャッチ
Like, see, he spins all the way around to shoot the up fireball, dude. That's so cool looking. <laughs> and it, you can see there, they also have some character specific lines as well. So it almost seems like some of these commentators actually got to say lines specific for characters as well, you know? be really interesting if I had any lines for any specific characters. That'd be kind of neat if I did. Um, but again, uh, so far me and Demon Kaka, I think, are the only character, are the only color, are the only color commentators in the game so far. So it's just the two of us. Tasty Steve is a main commentator. So Steve, Jeremy, Aru, and uh, Kosuke are four main commentators and we've got two color commentators right now and i think that's what we have at this point in time i think that's what we've got i don't know if that's just going to be the entire launch roster uh but we'll see we'll see yeah and uh i know they haven't showed it off a lot i'm not even sure if i'm i mean we've definitely saw a hint of this at the tasty steve and myself revealed trailer uh that we were kind of talking back and forth with each other uh, during the end, uh, so there, there's definitely a little bit of that uh, that's going to happen in the game as well. So, uh, but I, I, I think that's the way it works. Uh, color commentator. So basically, uh, we're just playing different roles uh, as the voices in the game. We're playing different roles. Uh, closed beta. Closed beta test happening for Street Fighter 6. I've been saying for the longest of time, if they want this game to come out like February or something like that, you know, or for the fiscal year and for the start of a new CPT season and stuff like that, we've got to get a beta test, man. We've got to get a beta test. Where's the beta test? And then uh, here it is. <laughs> here it is. <laughs> Beta test finally happening over here. Yeah, like I said, uh, Kali, I actually said, literally, like, can you disable this feature when they first approached me to do it? Because I know people wouldn't want to have it there. I know a lot of people wouldn't want to have that commentary on. So I wanted to make sure that you could disable the feature, uh, honestly. But here we go. Closed beta test announced. There's the Mad Gear guys. I don't know what is happening here. I don't know why that... Oh, these are the Mad Gear dancers? <laughs> Mad Gear dancers? Oh my god. Why are there Mad Gear dancers, dude? Actually, let's just watch this straight up without pauses. Sorry. No, you couldn't handle this. Everyone who battled me, they fallin' like an avalanche. Got them fallin' back to back. Take them all just hand to hand. Y'all going home for better pack the bag. I'm a heavy hitter, come take a sip of this potion. It float like a butterfly, I'm floating like the ocean. Battle cries of music to my ears, I'm the composer. Y'all can never hurt me, got you wilting like the roses. beta test October 7th through October 10th this weekend I am traveling to first attack <laughs> so I haven't even applied because <laughs> I'm not even gonna be able to play it <laughs> uh, but it's gonna have cross play it's gonna have cross play ranked match casual match battle hub match open tournament extreme battle game center and training mode it's gonna have all of it you're gonna be able to do all so in other words if you just want to sit there in training mode the whole entire weekend you absolutely can you absolutely can and that's crazy that's crazy and again that's I'm not gonna be able to play any of it because oh, I'm so sad oh my god I'm not gonna be able to play any of it
But again, I, I love the fact that they lean, like I said, they leaning so hard into the, you know, into the, 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 the vibe here. It's very easy to make cringy rap when you're trying to be cool, but I feel like they actually did a really, really good job. Like, the song's actually pretty good. Pretty, I'm not a rap expert, okay, so don't even take my word for anything. I think the song's pretty cool. It doesn't feel bad to me. <laughs> Ocean. And then, bam, right there. Money shot right here. Eight characters available to play. We've got... <laughs> did Kimberly's name just like... Did they cut it off and use the guy to block it because her name is too long? But Luke, Jamie, Chun-Li, Ryu, Kimberly, Ken... Guile, Jury are all going to be available on the beta. And again, eight characters in the beta is actually pretty sick. I think it's pretty sick, so. Not bad, not bad, but corny, very corny. Okay, fair enough. I like corny things, so there you go. October 7th. There you go. Close beta test October 7th, 7th through October 10th. They did announce that this is going to be a, uh, a, a raffle system. So it's not first come, first uh, get in. Uh, let's go to the details over here so we can take a look at the details a little bit. Um, uh, the aim of this closed beta test is for us to monitor the play experience of participants, identify any potential issues, and then address them in order to improve the quality of the game. As such, it is possible that errors may occur during the test that cause the game to freeze or close during gameplay. <laughs> the test sessions will be uh, will use a version of the game still in development. As a result, we cannot guarantee a smooth gameplay experience. Please bear all this in mind when taking part in the test. A survey for feedback to be shared with the development and operation teams will be sent out to everyone who participates in the closed beta test. We would really appreciate if all the closed beta test participants answer the survey as fully as possible. Note, please understand that not all requests and suggestions provided in the, through the survey will be implemented. So again, what's available? Playable content, character creation only possible once. Obviously, that's an implication that once you play the actual game, you can change your character all the time. Ranked matches, casual matches are probably the uh, online casual matches. Battle hub matches, see this is interesting here. I thought battle hub would be the ranked matches, but apparently battle hub is gonna be something different than ranked and casual matches. So it'll be really interesting to see what exactly the differences between them all are. Open tournaments are going to be in there. Training mode, hub goods shop, extreme battles, and updates daily. Game center updates daily. This might be where you can play like the old games. Challenges like they've implemented. DJ booth? Do they just let you go and play all the Street Fighter music? Do they actually just have like a, a DJ booth where you could play all the old music? And that photo spot which we saw with the guy doing all the different poses. Playable stages, Metro City Downtown, Gembu Temple, Carrier Byron Taylor, that's uh, that's the name of Guile's uh, commander, I think? Uh, the, the black guy that we've seen in the background of Street Fighter V. Uh, Tian Hong Yuan, which is probably Chun Li stage. The Macho Ring! And Training Room, okay. Non-lobby matchmaking, non-lobby matchmaking, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it'll be really interesting to see how it works. Uh, you can customize your avatar that appears in the Battle Hub when you play for the first time. You cannot save or load your avatar recipes or remake your avatar during the beta. Cross-platform play, modern and classic controls are going to be there. The commentary will be available. Vicious, Tasty, Steve, Aru, Kosko, Kosuke, which are the main commentators, and for the color commentators, myself and Demon Kaka are all going to be available to play. So <laughs> you're going to get to listen to me in the game, which is going to be interesting. Uh, CFN, online match fight request, and photo mode. So here we go. 
uh, I guess at the cabinet battle hub match the match will begin when both you and another player sit down at a battle cabinet You can go into training mode while you wait for a match. You can also spectate while others are playing Okay, so there's some confirmation about that spectating extreme battle the rules of extreme battle change every day You can go into training mode while you wait for a match or blah blah, blah. game center enjoy the classics once again This is single player content that changes daily. You can also spectate. So here we go. This is kind of like that that battle hub stuff like this so uh to be honest with you squall i i haven't heard a lot of it i haven't heard a lot of it so i can't really tell you <laughs> i i'd have to hear how they sound in the game to really feel that way but i mean from the ones that i've heard so far i i do like the way that i sound so far but we'll see uh, events we've got tournaments tournaments are held periodically go to the event counter to enter so yes there is a registration complete various challenges to resort reserve receive rewards in the form of drive tickets use fighter coins and drive tickets here to obtain gear for your avatar fighter coins provided as a first time gift during the cbt please obtain them through the news section of the multi menu and drive ticket obtainable by completing challenges or entering. There's so much stuff here, dude. <laughs> Menu, device. Use your handheld device to change your avatar's gears and set what emotes to use. I guess you probably have a handheld device in the game. Battle settings. Turn on fight requests for ranked casual match. Set up your favorite character and just commentary and other battle related settings. Multi-menu, access Capcom Fighters Network, rewards, news, and options from this menu. One other thing I will say, though, that's super cool about the commentary is that all the commentary is subtitled. They actually will write the commentary on the screen. This is actually really, really wonderful for accessibility. You haven't taken this feature away from the hard of hearing, from the deaf, and you also will not take it away from the people who can't understand the language, right? So obviously the way that they designed it is that, uh, you know, uh, the, we, we, certain things trigger certain phrases and the phrase is gonna be, you know, like, I have super excited, you know, corner combo sentence. And, you know, depending on who you pick, they will play their version of it kind of thing like that. So uh, that's really cool. And so, yeah, if they translate all of this stuff, like, that's super, super, super awesome. Uh, no, Jihad Joe, I did not uh, go off tangent. Uh, I was definitely not allowed to. <laughs> did I want to? Yes, I definitely did. Could I? No. <laughs> I could not do that. Uh, I mean, the commentary mode that is designed for blind players is literally the audio, right? I mean, <laughs> is, am, I, am I wrong on that? <laughs> am I wrong on that? Um, what, 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 what are we talking about? Oh, Daigo said players like him should be immortalized in the game. Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. I, I think that kind of makes sense. I, it definitely should happen. It should definitely happen. Uh, closed beta test schedule, October 7th through October 10th. Target platforms, everything except for Street Fighter 4. I mean, PlayStation 4. Uh, supported languages, here you go. So, yeah. Uh, the full release will also support these languages, so all the commentary should be translated in these. Participation conditions and all this other stuff over here. You have to have a Capcom ID as well. Uh, you must have an account for each of the platforms, etc., etc. Everyone selected will special in-game title as a gift. This will become available. Oh, dang. So if you've got into the closed beta test, you also get a special thing. Man, that sucks. I'm still not going to apply. I'm not going to take anybody's slot. I'm not taking anybody's slot if I can't play it just to get a title. Okay? I'm not doing it. But again, this is more of a raffle, kind of like a, a, a raffle system. It's not going to be a first come first serve thing. So uh, I, I think they're kind of trying to do it kind of at random. So uh, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. But here we go. Uh, this is, uh, let's see, uh, PlayStation blog stuff over here. 
Uh, let's just take a glance at this PlayStation blog thing over here really quick. Uh, just talking about these characters coming in here. For those of you who have actually read this whole entire thing, like, let's see, uh, your first destination will be Buckler Security, located in Metro City. This company trains new recruits in security detail. Here, Luke will act as your coach as you sign up for the basic training course, and this is where your story begins. That's so cool. So it would be immersive single-player story mode. So it is very story mode, so... Oh, yeah, of course, I'm sure bigger streamers and pros will get their codes, but I mean, I'm sure they have a bunch of slots reserved for them. They're not going to be like taking it away from other people. That's just going to happen, right? I mean, we can't imagine that they wouldn't do that. It's just really stupid for them not to. I mean, a lot of these guys have already had a chance to play it, right? Like Justin's been able to play the game already and stuff and stream videos on it. Uh, World Tour offers the most av robust avatar cr creation feature. Okay. Uh, several ways you can get your avatar's body type. Dude, the funniest video was they showed increasing the guy's head size. And as the head increased, the body shrank. And it was just like the most hilarious thing, dude. Uh, then go into even more details. This is going to be crazy being able to create this avatar, dude. You can also change your avatar's gear. So they always have the latest drip. <laughs> uh, categories of headgear, upper body, lower gear, foot gear, gear sets. Different gear affects your strengths and stats. Whoa. So be on the... Whoa. Okay. Luke, call him coach, will be your world tour guide as you begin your journey in Metro City. As you progress through the store, you'll meet masters who will take you under their wing and teach you their style and attacks. As you bond, as your bond with them grows stronger, oh, not Ken masters, just masters. You can also learn master actions, like a show you get from Ryu, a spinning bird kick from Chun-Li. Use them to open a battle and you'll kick things off with, a, with an advantage, or some of them can even be used to destroy wooden boxes or barrels, or leap to a far away Way platforms master actions while convenient do consume drive gauge so always keep an eye on how much you have left in the tank during your travels you'll face a number of trials and challenges you come across opportunities to prove yourself in street fights dude in metro city long times will find familiar locations like names from street fighter universe as the city's signature landmarks make sure to explore around every quarter no never no. this part is like the freaking, the, the one that got me most hype, dude. Like, this I want to see. This I want to, I'm just going to run around and try to find all the references. We'll have more information in the future. Battle Hub. Take your avatar from into the Battle, battle Hub. Uh, where you can gather with other players to communicate through various means. Fighting Ground online features are also accessible in the Battle Hub. So Fighting Ground sounds like ranked and casuals and stuff like that. Uh, one Battle Hub can host up to 100 players at the same time. Nice. Uh, players can use emotes or chat to communicate with each other. Of course, make sure you check the Hub Good Shop to show off your fashion when you're out on the floor. There are also a host of arcade cabinets that you will fight, find in the Battle Hub. Uh, take Part in arcade-like battle hub matches on cabinets that are placed back to back. A match will begin when two players sit on both sides. Having audiences change everything and turns a mere fight. Oh, that's so cool. Spectator battle hub. Yeah. See, dude, getting crowds in the battle hub, taking, getting crowds in the battle hub is going to be the coolest thing. Head over to the game cabinets, a uh, game center cabinets to play classic arcade games like Street Fighter 2 and Final Fight. Don't forget to check out various events that are going ongoing or scheduled. Tournaments are peri held periodically in the Battle Hub. This would be a great time to turn on the commentary feature and get the feel of a real tournament. Jam out at the DJ booth in Battle Hub by picking your favorite tunes and setting the dance floor aflame. Okay, so you're probably going to be able to play all the music from all of the old Street Fighters. Dude, come on, come on. Bear witness? Oh my god. Like Zangief Street Fighter Five stage, says Dubu Domo in the chat. <laughs> uh, well done. The bear witness is in the background. The bear, the bear witness is in the background. Uh, what did it say? Uh, someone said uh, in here. Someone said something that made me think of something, but I can't forget right now. 
Oh, they'll probably do the 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 arcade version of Final Fight. This this ge- these games have ratings now, so who cares? Uh, four legendary characters join. So here's Ken. We'll read more about him in a little bit. Blanca, Dalsim, uh, <laughs> Dalsim. He's spewing fire out the side of his mouth while his foot is at his. What is he doing? <laughs> what is happening? Uh, and then Honda. Turn up the volume to extreme. Uh, each extreme battle contains a rule and a gimmick. A rule is the conditions that must be met to win the match. For example, you can set the rule to first to get five knockdowns to win. See, I told you. I told you. I hadn't read this yet. A gimmick, on the other hand, adds an extra error of delight. Examples are stampeding bulls that run through the level and deals damage. A met from Mega Man that can shock you. And more wacky surprises that amp up the excitement. This is a mode for those who want something different from the usual fights. If you want to survive in the extreme, luck is every bit as important as technique and again this is really important this is how you're gonna get your casual friends to play fighting games with you because it's not as serious so when a lot of people you know when we talk about smash brothers and items and stuff everybody that i knew played smash with me with the four with the free for all four players with items because of this, because of the fact that you could grab a golden hammer and kill everybody and win. Like, we understand the idea of competition, but if the game is only competition and only serious competition, you don't get people to play your game, right? So, for example, that's why Mario Kart has all those dumb items and will never not have those dumb items. As much as I think the blue shell is one of the worst video game mechanics in the entire world ever created, it's not going anywhere because that's the whole point is that they're trying to make it so that there is this level that, you know, casual players can have fun with. And that's really, really important, I think. And shout out to Tenderfoots, thank you for the subscription. And so I think that extreme mode is gonna be really cool because now when you invite your friends over and you're like, hey, let's play fighting games, and be like, okay, and then you can sit here and play this, and now it's about getting knockdowns, which will teach your opponent how to which will teach people how to try to score knockdowns, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's just such a great shell. It's such a great idea, dude. I turned and read the word shell on the chat and that messed me up. Uh, but yeah, so more information about that. Here's the commentators. Kosuke Hiraiwa is a well-known esports caster who lends his expertise and professionalism. H.E. Demon Kaka is the lead singer of Japanese heavy metal band uh, Seikima 2. While they will commentate your matches in Japanese, there will be accompanying English subtitles on the screen if they are selected. <laughs> there you go. So that's the, uh, the PlayStation blog information over here. Uh, let's keep going up here. Artwork of Ken. So here we go. Uh, extreme mode over here. Do they just have this? Yeah. So extreme battle. So this is where, you know, I saw a lot of very, very interesting things. So let's just watch this trailer once with audio. So there's a lot to digest in this video. There is a lot to digest in this video. And the first thing here is look at the top of the screen. We've got knockdown count, a knockdown count over here. So you're playing this and you'll see, obviously if you block the bowl, you get guard broken and all Ryu does is that in the sweep and boom, knockdown got taken away. That knockdown got taken away. So Ryu scored a knockdown here. Again, you see this knockdown mode uh, out of the t- on the top over here, and counter hit 
interesting, and it says force knockdown. I don't know if this means hard knockdown. I don't know if this is just unique to the, to the extreme mode, or have we seen that counter hits out of the air create free juggles now? Is that just a system in Street Fighter VI that I've just missed uh, for any of those who, like, watched L uh, the, the L.I. Joe and the and the Yipe stream and stuff like that? But we have get this hard knockdown over here. And yeah, you get knocked down and he lost the, that meter up there. And then he gets hit by the bull. And you see, he just needs to score one more knockdown. Bam! KO! There you go. So we've got a knockdown mode here. And then this, this is just pure chaos. And I love it, by the way. I love this. I mean, there's two of these things dropping down now. I think these are unblockable, if I'm not mistaken. Once they explode, I'm pretty sure they're unblockable. And this boom blows up, and it looks like this is just regular damage mode. This looks like regular damage mode. But this looks absolutely enjoyable. Now, I have always wanted this in a fighting game. I have always wanted this in a fighting game, which is a tug-of-war life bar. I've always wanted a tug-of-war life bar in a fighting game as a casual mode. And here it is, unblockables. <laughs> well done, Jihad Joe. Well, well done. Well done, unblockables. There we go. I love it. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the life bar is a tug of war. And not only that, but if you look very carefully, the bars shrink as times as the time goes. The, the bars continue to shrink. As you can see here, we're at 27 seconds. The bar is much smaller now. And Jury obviously has some sort of uh, 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 yin yang mechanic over here. Yin yang mechanic. Boom. Hard knockdown combos. And then I don't know what's going over here, but it says like drive impact in the middle screen. It says jumping attacks. So it's like you can only do certain things. Only certain things do damage, perhaps? Like only jumping jumping attacks do damage? Like did that do any damage? Did that do any damage? So let's see. Kicky kicky kick. The kick did no damage. The kick did no damage. He got points for it. But the kick literally did no damage. So basically that thing on the screen is telling you the only way to damage the opponent. So this is going to train you guys for jumping and for, and for anti-airs and stuff like that. Okay, this is sick. This is sick. And so what happens is they get electrocuted. Oh, and you both have to taunt now? And so you see that they got more points from the taunt? Like, Jamie actually got the points from the taunt. Yeah, Jamie's taunt is really sick, by the way. So, yeah, it is kind of a Simon Says mode, maybe, but the only way you could do damage is by doing those things and you get points for it or something. Dude, that's really interesting. Oh, is it maybe a first to 30k? Oh, that might be what it is, yeah. So, I mean, it looked like... Oh, Luke taunted first. Luke is actually the first player, so Luke actually won because he taunted first and got the 30,000 points first. And that's why he's winning. And look at, see what I mean by like, oh, is it next to the portrait? Oh, you're right. It says 30,000 up there. You're right. Okay, okay. But also, God, Luke is such, he's such a douchebag, dude. Oh my God. Like I said, he's like the guy who thinks he's cool. And he's trying to be cool, but he's clearly like everything that's not cool. And so this stupid little dance makes me laugh so much, dude. He's such like, he is like the biggest loser that is no, not aware that he's like, his theme song is pretty fly for a white guy. Like that's literally his theme song is Offspring's pretty fly for a white guy. Like that is, that's perfectly designed for him dude like seriously <laughs> oh man gotta do this come on 
All right, we'll get to here in just a second. We'll get to here in just a second. We'll get there. Uh, yeah, actually, it's kind of true. He is a lot. Uh, he is actually uh, uh, very Thor-like. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, cinco, seis. Uh, so that's that here. Happy birthday to Karin in world tour. So uh, we, we get a little bit more hardcore world tour video action over here. So here we go. This is uh, the meaning of strength. And again, let's just listen to this straight up uh, neat dialogue on this. So I've been thinking about strength, man. Strength, might, the power to fight. Is it money, authority, a cool job, a ton of likes? <laughs> okay, okay. Let's keep it simple. I want to be strong. Can you believe it? We got self-driving cars. The time's coming, we'll be taking rockets to Mars. And yet you still got folks out there using their fists and bodies to seek strength. Yeah, I hear you, man. We're all a bunch of fools. But, you know, if you want to know about strength, you just got to get to it. We fighting fools are all getting to it on the streets. I mean, this is the World Tour opening movie. So I'm assuming the first time you jump into World Tour, you end up getting this little video playing over here. And it's so cool. Like, nicely done to these guys for doing this. Again, and to, like, the imagery of this whole thing is so nicely done. Dude, Kemi has pants, dude. She has pants for once. World tour. So I've been thinking about strength, man. Strength. Luke. So we've got Luke in the house over here. I don't know what that says up there. Is that his name? Is that supposed to say Luke something? Or I don't even know what that says up there. Mike. And here we go, Kimberly. And again, this artwork is so sick. This artwork is just amazing. Uh, I believe her name is Marissa, as that's what that looks. What this looks like, it says Marissa uh, is the super buff chick that we have no idea anything about. This guy, oh Luke Sullivan, that's what it is. Is it money? This is uh, this is JP, right? This is the JP character. This is the character that's supposed to be the next point of. Q and uh, and G, I believe. So it's supposed to be G and then Q, and now here's a JP here. So I don't know what the deal with his story is, but that's, I think, his name. Uh, and it's not even Mimi anymore, right? It's just a different name now. I don't know who this is. Who? Which character is this one? This is, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is the Mimi character, which the actual name is Manon. Manon. M-A-N-O-N. Well, she looks a lot different than I kind of remember seeing from the leaks. Anyway, uh, we don't talk about leaks here. Uh, so Manon here. And this part is interesting here. This part is actually something that Olaf noted. So you remember in the previous game, Blanca has been spending his whole entire time trying to write his image. That's why he created the, the Blanca Chan dolls, because what he wanted was for people to like him, right? So what, uh, we have a ton of likes here. And then we transition over to Blanca. And uh, Olaf was the one that pointed this out to me. This box looks kind of like a text box. Oh, check out the dollar bill, too. Is it oh, it's Dr. Light! Dude, that's Dr. Light! 
100 Zenny, and Dr. Light is on the bill. That's amazing. Authority, a cool job, a ton of likes. So this looks kind of like a text box. So this is what Olaf was pointing out. It's like a text box or a phone, right? Doesn't that look like the back of a phone case? Like that looks like the back, like, I mean, literally look at my phone case, right? I mean, like it's, it's, it's the exact same thing. And then it says, <laughs> and it's Blanca. Olaf's theory is that Blanca was so successful with the Blanca chance that he's actually now an, an influencer. <laughs> That he's actually an influencer now. And, you know, he he does run those tours in Brazil. And that's such an awesome, like, storyline arc for Blanca. Is that he's turned himself into a lovable monster who's just, like, an online influencer. Like, that's actually kind of sick. If that's actually true. Okay. 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 Let's keep it simple. Okay. Jamie? I wanna be strong. Strong? Zangief? Oh, I can't wait for this character, man. Cannot wait for this character. I hope they give him a lot of really, really kind of disgusting new cool things. Yeah, it's true, he does have pants. <laughs> Everybody's got pants. DJ. DJ, and it does say maximum on his, uh, on his uh, jewel over here. In case you didn't know, it was supposed to say, uh, it was supposed to say Mantis. So DJ's pants were supposed to say Mantis on the side of his pants. But unfortunately, what they found out was that when he was fighting in the fighting game, when he got mirror image, the S was backwards. <laughs> and so it didn't work. So they changed his pants to say Maximum. Because every one of those letters is mirror imageable. And so that way it was maximum on both sides. And so they've kept that there on his uh, necklace here. And they've done such a good job with like a lot of the character redesigns. I'm actually really eager to see how they portray him. Because DJ is obviously one of those characters that has never really been very flatteringly portrayed in the Street Fighter games. And I really, really hope DJ is done really well in this game. Like, I want him... I'm hoping that he... I mean, the, the fireball used to be called Mantis Slash. In, Jap in Japan, it's called Mantis Slash. And then in America, he says, Max out! And I think that was only in America did he say. Because in Japan, he just goes, Ha! 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 In America, they change to say, Max out! Just like they changed all of Cammy's names uh, of a mo and stuff like that. Right. So that's my concern, the real Kimosabe. Like, I, I hope they do it in a respectable way, right? So uh, Kimosabe actually says, as a Jamaican DJ, as a Jamaican DJ makes me kind of angry. So, uh, I mean, I think the smile is fine. I don't think that there's anything wrong with the smile, but like, uh, you. You're actually saying that you actually like this design for him, which is really, really cool. Which is, I'm glad to hear then that so far at least the design is working out pretty well. Uh, it's kind of too late to get rid of the smile for DJ because that's just absolutely part of who he is now. So, And then Rockets, this is Lily. Looks like she's actually doing the condor dive that T-Hawk has. This is like, uh, is it a stereotype that Jamaicans are always smiling and happy? Is that actually a stereotype? I, I actually was not aware of that. Yeah, she's holding a weapon. She's holding a weapon. We don't know if she's Mexican or if she's Native American, but she's part of T-Hawk's tribe, and T-Hawk has always been from Mexico. So he's probably Native American from living in Mexico is basically what it is. So it's not Tom Fuzz. It's, uh, it's like these weird, almost like boomerangy things or something like that. So 
it's an old 90s stereotype. Interesting. Oh, I see. That I was not aware of. So to be fair, to be fair, I was not aware of that real Kimosabe. So that's actually kind of a thank you for that little bit of uh, education there uh, on exactly how that works. Uh, I mean, on that, the history of that stereotype there. So to Mars and then Guile, of course, looks sick. And then my girl, my girl, Cammy with the short hair. She's done with the pigtails. She's got a jacket on. And yes, she is wearing pants. It's just such a sick design for Cammy. And I do like the fact that the more that she's existed, like at first in Street Fighter V, it was very weird that they got rid of her very anime look and definitely made her look more Caucasian. But I'm glad they're doing it and they're, and they're leaning into it more here that she's got the prominent nose. She's always had kind of like a prominent nose, even in Super Turbo, but it's just the way anime designs always worked. It wasn't quite there. But I, I really, uh, dude, I, the old Onyx, I am, I, God, I hope they do some cool things with her. Please, please, like, please don't make her like Street Fighter V. Please don't make her like Street Fighter V. But I also love the cat paws. Thank you for the cat paws. Appreciate that. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Cammy and the cat paws. They did it for me, man. They did it for me. No, they didn't do it for me. She loves cats. She's always loved cats. But it's so cool that they even just put that in that there, ball. dude. And then Chun-Li. Again, I think Chun-Li looks beautiful in this game. I, I... I love the way Chun-Li looks in this game. Uh, I know some people don't like the way her face looks in the game, but I, I, I adore the way Chun-Li looks in this game. I she thinks she looks absolutely amazing. I love that she looks a lot more uh, Asian featured and stuff. You know, obviously it's weird kind of like reverse racism or whatever you want to call it to say that she didn't look Asian before because Asians come in all types and stuff like that. But again, I, I just like the way she looks in this. I mean, she, this is like, I, I, I really do just like the way she looks. So, and then I still think Ken looks awesome. I still think Ken looks awesome. I know. I, I don't know. Like the, I like this look. I like the bearded Ken look. I like the bearded Ken look. Oh, man. Using their fit. And then Jury, like I've already said, I love absolutely insane Jury. And I've said this on Twitter already, but she is giving me such Azula vibes from Avatar. Like, I love the Azula vibes, how she went from, like, you know, whatever she was in Street Fighter 4, really strong, and then 5 kind of going a little more insane, and now she's just absolutely batshit insane. She can't even cut her hair right, just like Azula in the end of Avatar. She couldn't even cut her hair right. Like, I love the Azula vibes. It's like the same arc. Like, she's just absolutely going insane, and... And kind of just like losing her mind because the whole sin thing is probably over. That whole arc is probably done. So what's she doing now, right? I think she might just be bored. And so now she's just on her cell phone, memeing it up, eating lollipops, and just making fun of Chun-Li. Like, I really feel like she's just really really just kind of like lost it. And that to me has actually made her more interesting <laughs> than before dude this whoever's drawing all these pictures is ridiculous these this world tour opening movie artwork is just so sick dude that wind pose is the greatest thing ever let's go i like the hand prints all over I, I, I like the, the like the stamping hand prints with paint is such a nice touch for e honda dude it's so good <laughs> And then Dalsum, dude, what is he? Oh, he's blowing, he's blowing, like he's creating fire in his hand like this. Dude, it's, uh, when, in Street Fighter V is when he first started doing this, this hand pose a lot more. And I remember when Street Fighter V came out, 
there was somebody who was very familiar with Indian culture and talked about the significance of these poses and stuff like that and how a lot of his posing and stuff was much more uh, culturally accurate and stuff like that. So it's actually really, really cool. Um, yeah, a lot of people love the way this Dalsam looks, honestly. Uh, Sims stretches are an illusion. Is that supposed to be the lore? <laughs> I actually didn't know that. And then, of course, <laughs> ordinary guy. <laughs> but he's hot Ryu all the time now. He's hot Ryu all the time. Yeah, I hear you, man. I mean, this is a game where they're chucking fireballs. Who cares if he can actually stretch, dude? Who cares if he can actually stretch? Just let him stretch. We're all a bunch of and then here's all these backgrounds here. Yeah, I hear you, man. So this is the Chun Li area over here. Ginger super oil guy. I mean, it's gonna be hard to read a lot of these signs back there, but I love the way it looks. If you've ever been to a Chinatown, this is what they look like, man. So what's interesting about Asian countries is that Asian countries are very much about signs and putting signs everywhere. And the one thing that you'll notice about Asian countries a lot too as well, because the writing of Asian languages is such an art and beautiful on its own, that you'll actually notice in a lot of Asian countries, the signs are just Asian characters and there's very few pictures, there's very few logos and things like that. It's very rare, whereas in America, it's about imagery and pictures and here's the picture of this. Like, take a look at this design, compare it with like the Metro City downtown where it's like, you see the shoe, you see the Chun-Li, you see the stuff like that. Asian countries are not like this. Like when you go to Japan, even when you go to the Shibuya Crossing, which is like their version of, of, of Times Square, a lot of it is just lettering. It's just the characters. This is how Asian countries are very, very dominated by. It's just, it's the writing. And it's one of, it's, I, it's, it's a very subtle cultural difference that I really, really admire and I really think is fascinating. And I don't think a lot of people talk about it, actually. But that's, that's kind of how it works. Like, like I said, if you ever manage to go to Japan or China or Korea, you'll see a lot of it is actually just calligraphy. And so you see signs like this, like this sign over here, like... It's that's it. That it's just the sign. <laughs> it's just the name, but it's done in a, a calligraphic way, right? So uh, it's really interesting the difference between the cultures like that. It, it's really fascinating. Okay, so what was this one here? This is Maximum Bar. So this is DJ's background over here. So this is back to the beach. This is probably his Super Turbo stage here, uh, done in a little bit different way. But yeah, that's really beautiful. The sunset is really beautiful over here. And then here we go, downtown Metro City. This is Metro City Times Square, whatever this is called here. You see the Hakan Oil back here again, and a Luke thing over here, and uh, other stuff over here. Clanora? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that means. But, you know... Here's the ring, here's the ring stage here with the Street Fighter 6 logo. And also shout outs to the new Street Fighter 6 logo. Like they like literally uh, they went from like if that first one wasn't a placeholder logo, if that was actually supposed to be the original logo, they went from like one of the most lazy logos to like one of the most in, like, I love the new Street Fighter 6 logo. <laughs> I love the new Street Fighter 6 logo. <laughs> Here's that JP guy again. I wonder uh, if the Fenrix, uh, I hope the stages don't hurt the frame rate. I don't want players living in the training stage. I wonder if the PS4 version is going to have planar backgrounds as a result. Uh... 
interesting idea. Yeah, we're not even sure who's supposed to be the bad guy of this game yet. Like, uh, one of the uh, leaked characters, again, I'm not going to talk about him, but, like, I wonder if they're going to be a boss character or something like that, or if JP is going to be the boss or what. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Oh, whoa, it's, it is JP? So what does this say here? Uh, let's see what this says here. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, please give me the translate tweet option. I do not have the translate tweet option. Oh, but the picture back here, yeah, definitely looks like he's kind of like a boss status in the back over there. Theoretically, Bison is dead. Yes, theoretically, Bison is dead. That That is the idea. We're done with Shadaloo. I mean, there's no... In the, if you look at the initial 18 roster, there is zero presence of Shadaloo at all. There's no Bison, there's no Vega, there's no Sagat, there's no Boxer, there's no Fung, there's no Ed in the initial 18 roster chat, there's no Ed in the initial 18 roster chat, uh, um, so uh, we don't know if anybody from Shadowloo is actually showing up in the game, uh, so we'll see, we'll see. <coughs> All right, back to this thing over here. And here, this picture, I mean, look at this. But now, here's the thing. So this is the initial 18 right here, right? So we've got Blanca. This is Manon. 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 I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Manon. Jamie. Cami. Jury, who can't cut her own hair. Zangief. Guile. I love that reuse facing the wrong way. Uh, David referenced this. I was trying to find a GIF for it so I could post it, but it took me too long because animated GIFs are impossible on the phone. Totally reminds me of Daigo in the Guilty Gear where he looked at everybody and forgot to do the eSports pose. Ryu is not even facing the right way. This is JP back here. This is Marissa. This is Luke, Ken, E. Honda, Kimberly, Chun-Li, DJ, Dalsam and uh, Lily, Lily. So uh, again, I don't know if she would. I, I, I'm not sure if it would be more pronounced like Lily, because if it, that that would be a more Spanish pronunciation, you wouldn't say Lily. It would be Lily. So I wonder if that's actually uh, how you would pronounce their names. Again, I'm kind of a stickler for that. I'm even mostly calling Karin Karin most of the time now because that's actually how her name is supposed to be pronounced. When I'm doing commentating, I'll say Karen just because it's easier and it's less distracting. But when I'm talking about the character outside or even in between matches, you'll notice that I do this on commentary and I do it on purpose. You don't realize that we think about these things all the time, but whenever I commentate her in the match, I'm like, because Karen's roundhouse is really good or, oh man, you got that Karen, Karen's crouching medium kick, blah, blah, blah. Then in between matches, I'll be like, I wonder if he's going to play Karin. I wonder if he's going to, like, I intentionally do that because I want to pronounce her name correctly. I even say Yin and Yang instead of Yun and Yang, right? I don't actually say Yun and Yang. I say Yin and Yang. The only names that I actually still don't pronounce correctly are Juni and Julie. Uh, I know they're supposed to be Huni and Huli, but like, it I, I just doesn't sound right. Dude, it just Chun Li, Chun Li. If I really wanted to pronounce it right, it'd be Chun Li, Chun Li. It wouldn't actually be Chun Li. Chun Li is the way that it's pronounced in Japanese, but in Chinese, her name is actually Chun Li, which means beautiful spring, is what it means. Spring, as in the season. Uh, Chun Li is is her name, and that's kind of the way that the accents would go as well. She means a beautiful spring, like lovely, lovely spring weather, basically, is what Chun Li's name actually means. So, uh, Chun Li, yeah. Uh, but there you go. That's that's the roster here, dude. Like, God, this art is so sick. Like these, they just all look so amazing. I actually like the fact that Cammy looks older, not even outside of the hair. There's just something about the demeanor and stuff like that that looks older. So, yeah. Fighting fools are all getting to it on the streets. On the streets, dude. They're putting so much work into this, right? Tiny text. It's crazy. And again, the Street Fighter Six logo. 
The fact that they made it a hexagon with the VI here on the right side. Oh, God. And, you know, connected it with the orange spray paint lines. Like, like, ah, chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. I, these are like my favorite kind of logos. My favorite kind of logos are the ones that have like hidden imagery in there or like it represents something or it has a reference to something like that. And I love that. I love that so much. So, Does it have a glove look? I'm trying to figure out how it looks like a glove right now. Uh, someone's going to have to point that out to me. So... FedEx logo is a good one. Yeah, example f like that as well. Yeah. I mean, one of my favorite logos is uh, there's a Spartan golf logo. Spartan golf logo. This is one of my favorite logos in the world. Uh, I love this logo to death. I mean, just just look at this logo, dude. How sick is that, dude? <laughs> Like, this is clearly one of my favorite logos, dude. <laughs> I love this. I love this logo so much, dude. <laughs> Anyways, back to Twitter over here, World Tour. So this is that's the end of that over here. Uh, TGS get Day 2 pictures here. Ken selection screen over here. Ken art. These little stickers that they had over there are so cool. When all the stickers come out, I want all the stickers. I hope they just let us buy every single one of these stickers, please. Please just let us buy every one of these stickers. Because I am going to buy all of them, dude. Look at this Dalsam one, dude. It's so cool. Fighter message. Are they going to do like a splatoon type thing but like these stickers are all so cool i want all of them or coasters or something please capcom finally get your stuff together and sell some quality merch like snk stuff dude like thanks to olaf and kitty i'm vastly aware of how good snk merch is and how absolutely like subpar <laughs> A lot of the uh, oh, the Ryu drawing. <laughs> the Ryu drawing is amazing. Oh, uh, man. SNK is like the master of merch for their games, man. And we, we need to get in on that. So here we go. Uh, special program. This is some of the live stuff. And here you go. Ken here. Been holding on to this one. So Ken pictures here. And as we see here. In fact, let's just go straight to the site here and read about him. Former U.S. National Champion and XVP, XVP of the Masters Foundation. Accusations of orchestrating a criminal plot have forced Ken to abandon his family and business and go into hiding. So he didn't become a bum because he was like trying to keep fighting and become like Ryu and he didn't get divorced or she didn't take the wife and kids. He literally basically... Uh, he basically had to run away because he's been uh, orchestrating a crew. Someone framed him for something. And I wonder if this will be one of the main plots of the game, is that this will be one of the main plots here. Maybe JP has something to do with it or something like that. Right, yeah, a lot of us, a lot of people in the chat are talking about JP. So it'd be really interesting to see what, whoa, what the heck? Oh, I see, I accidentally dragged an image here. But again, you know, uh... Oh, the video isn't here. Okay. But yeah, so here he is over here. Uh, t -t 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 voice, David. Yeah. And da -da 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 -da. All right. So let's go back over here. See some more pictures. But more importantly than the pictures, I know they have a Ken video. Don't they have a Ken video somewhere? Is it not uploaded here? Maybe it's on their Twitter. Uh, uh, maybe it's all on their Twitter. So let's just keep going here. So new Ken artwork. Hungry Clicker, of course. If Hungry Clicker, Hungry Clicker draws your characters, you retweet that right away. <laughs> uh, so here's that opening video again. So good. Uh, this was the training mode video. That's right. So do they have the training mode video here? 
Oh, they dang, they don't have the training mode video uploaded to their YouTube. Because it should be uh, newest over here. They don't have the training mode. Yeah, he already made a cami. I definitely saw that one already. So, look at this. This is sick. Simple training settings. Combo practice, anti-air practice. Offensive pressure practice. Throw escape practice. Standard CPU battle. Standard CPU battle is in training mode. Fighting the computer is in training mode. With punish practice. Punish practice. Drive impact defense practice. The frame meter and you. Like, this is cool. Oh, no, 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 Renato. Trust me, he does not. Hungry Cooker draws that stuff super fast. Super fast. Uh, screen display settings is just going to be like, do this to the HUD. Uh, probably resolution on PCs, etc., etc. So, um, right. Very clearly labeled here. Ryu will randomly switch between neutral jumps and forward jumps attacks. Practice intercepting the forward jump attack with anti-air of your own. Additionally, enabling recording slots four through six will add a horizontal movement. So there's like three recordings and you have to stop him and you can turn on three more recordings and he will do other stuff. Enabling recording slots four and six will add horizontal movement and a forward dash into throw mix-up to reuse moveset, forcing you to focus on both the air and the ground. Applying this preset will overwrite Ryu's recording slots. This is sick. I've been programming this myself manually all day in Street Fighter V training mode. They actually have this for you. Now, obviously the way they have it set up, it will overwrite whatever you've recorded in there. Who the fuck cares? Cause this is awesome, dude. This is amazing. This is what we've needed forever. This is what we've needed forever. So two of the slots are neutral jump is what it's going to be. Two of the slots are neutral jump and one of the slots is going to be jump forward is my is my expectation. So he neutral jumps more often than he actually jumps forward. And then they show the drive impact defense practice here. Ryu will jump in place, then launch a drive impact. Though powerful, responding to opponent's drive impact with a drive impact of your own will result in a powerful counter. You can also counter drive impacts with a drive parry or by jumping in place. Find a defensive measure that works for you. Now, what's important about this is that drive impacts look really strong, but they're very reactable. We've already seen footage of someone out throwing a normal that is bufferable the drive impact absorbs it like the focus attack, but then the guy who gets their button absorbed cancels their normal into a drive impact. So drive impact will probably, like, it's probably one of the reasons why they were able to make so many normals have just the most ridiculous range in this game. Because if we run into normals that are not cancelable by drive impact, then you have a situation where if you're trying to predict those really good buttons, you can drive impact them. But if you're wrong and they do a move that is cancelable in the drive impact, you are in for a world of hurt. Dubu Domo, Hungry Clicker has videos of his of him actually like look for his YouTube. He has a YouTube and you actually see videos of his entire process of drawing it and he's just fast and again it's not that he's fast it's that he's probably spent decades learning how to draw and so that speed comes obviously from the talent uh, you know that you know that but it's just sometimes artists get the short end of the stick like man you draw this so fast I shouldn't have to be charged $50 for your artwork you know kind of things like that so yeah no hungry clicker is absolutely a person a person who is doing all this stuff 
But yeah, uh, Drive Impact is, uh, it's really interesting how this, uh, how this mechanic is going to work because it sounds really powerful. If the opponent blocks it in the corner, they get wall splatted and are just opened up for a combo. So you're gonna have to have really good reaction to this. However, it's very bombastic. It's, and as soon as you see it, that will probably trigger you into responding with your own. But it's really interesting how this is all gonna play out. I'm wondering how well it's going to work. Dude, High Fight, like, I I believe High Fight is like nine people, dude. There's no way he watches as many streams as he does, puts out all those content and all that stuff like that. I know he's a single person. I've met High Fight, wonderful, wonderful dude. He is just such a great person and such a value to the community. So shout outs to High Fight. Um, so here we go, show an example. Boom, so whoever activates the second drive impact always wins. So that's the main thing to understand about how drive impacts work. Whoever activates the second one always wins. So second activated, and as soon as they activate it, they know the other guy's in for a world of hurt. So you get super animation, bam! And this is where you get the paint splatter everywhere, like this on the ground. And what I love about the paint splatter too is that like we've seen it on Jamie's, like some of the paint splatter hits Jamie and so it leaves like a blind spot on the ground. It's really, really cool. Yeah, there's very, very focus, focus uh, concept about it, absolutely. But see, drive parry, you can also use to defend against it. You can throw it. Like, so you can practice all the timings there. And again, what is, oh God. And again, like, it's hard for me not to sit here and just gush about everything, but Jesus Christ, dude. Like, all this stuff makes me so happy. All this stuff makes me just the most ridiculous happy that I can be. Uh, Jamie artwork. Okay, if you don't have enough health to armor through or your DI armor gets broken by a stray projectile before the first DI hits. Right, of course, of course. Right, yeah, that's a good point, Kelvane. Uh, let them know what you like so they keep doing it. And if this sells a lot of Street Fighter V, then that's important because then it'll show that putting in the time and the effort like this is definitely worth it. And this, dude, oh my god, like, god. Again, shoutouts to everybody who saw this and immediately thought of me. Who immediately thought of me. <laughs> Appreciate it very much. But as you can see here, the frame data is on the screen and you even see the hit stun on the screen when he gets hit by the first one over here and it shows the recovery and it shows that how you are actually plus over here that recovery is this the person who got hit recovery is minus five frames the person who is doing the attack is plus five frames up here like this is so so cool and yeah again for those people who actually saw this and thought of me and people out in the chat are wondering why would they think of you? Let me show you my Excel spreadsheet <laughs> that I was doing before. <laughs> this was my frame data spreadsheet that I did in my first attack episodes. <laughs> and I was showing people, here's their hit stun and block stun. So if you hit them with this button over here, you are plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You are plus seven. On block, you can actually take this and put this over here and you're plus three. If I actually take this hit stun over here like this and I'm plus seven, and I take the frame data of crouching medium kick and I take this and I copy it and I paste it to the end of this up here, you'll see that I hit you in the middle of hit stun and so that's why you know it combos. This was me actually showing people frame data in a visual style. I did this a long time ago in one of my first attack episodes to actually show how this looks and to understand why frame data works and why hitting meaty. So if I can somehow miss the buttons and hit meaty, 
and it hits on this frame, now the move is plus five. That's why media attacks work the way they do because the block stun is always the same length no matter what active frame you hit them on. And so that's why on media you get better frame advantage on some situation and not on others. This was something that I created because I really, really wanted to show people frame data from a very visual understanding and Fanta even saying that this is what helped me understand frame data. And absolutely, like this is such an important thing because not all people wanna stare at numbers. When I said on the stream that numbers are scary and everybody got mad at me, <laughs> this is what I mean. We can present things in much better fashion and seeing them actually do that here in the exact same way is just such a joy to me. This is, this is such a joy to me. Now, you know, to be fair, Hassan in the chat says, I don't want to stare at bars either, to be honest. And that's fine. The point is that you're presenting data in different ways. No, they don't have to pay. If they stole this from me, good. <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> Steal it. Steal it. Please. I mean, math numbers aren't scary. They are. Trust me. I know a lot of people who just, when numbers are presented, their brain short circuits. That's why mathematicians use charts, graphs, and diagrams, because they understand as well that numbers are scary to a lot of people. And, uh, but again, like very similar to what I'm doing here, they even show the startup total is 19, the act, there's five active frames and 16 recovery frames here. They wrote down what the hit stun here is, is at 26 frames. Like this is just fantastic. And again, even if you don't want to stare at bars or numbers, you've presented it in a way for different brains to absorb it. And this is what I was talking about when everybody yelled at me on Twitter when I said I don't just want straight numbers in our games for frame data. I said absolutely frame data needs to exist but we need to figure out a way to present it in a way that's processable. Now for people like Hassoun who says they don't want like the numbers and the bars don't work for them, there may be a third way to do it and we should try to find a third way to do it but the whole point is that we need to present it in all the different ways possible so that scientists and numbers people can just look at the numbers and it all makes sense. There are going to be people who are going to look at these numbers and go, these numbers make more sense to me than the bars. And then there are going to be the visual people who are going to look at this and go, oh my God, this is what frame data is. Oh, right? And that's the important thing. We need to present it in every fashion possible for people and I think that this is important and again this should be the standard going forward until we find a better way no jinxed Ellie and I'm not saying that because you're wrong I'm saying is this should be the standard going forward including when we find a better way because better for one person is not better for everybody if we can find a different way put them all in <laughs> put them all in that is the key right there. Let people learn the way they learn. Numbers do not teach everybody. There are people who play Street Fighter V, and Street Fighter V is the first fighting game that makes sense to them because they can look at the frame data and go, oh, it's their turn. Oh, it's my turn. And then the game is all about the game telling you whose turn it is. There's definitely, yeah, sorry, Jinx Deli. I didn't mean to call you out like that, but you know uh, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So I'm, I'm adding to what you're saying. Uh, but again, that's the idea, right? Is that scientists, there's players who have learned Street Fighter V and played their first fighting game ever because the numbers make sense to them. No other fighting game has been that hardcore numbers before. And this is like the first one that is. And it's opened up fighting games to a whole new audience. There are people out there who Street Fighter V makes so much sense to them because of that. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, like I said, that's the reason why I say that game is the most different Street Fighter out of all of them because it is the one that you do play most scientifically. But that is a good thing. We've opened fighting games up to different people. And so that will bring them into other games and stuff. And, you know, once you get to the highest levels of Street Fighter V, it becomes about heart anyway it'll get to that point where it's about heart and it's not about frame data anymore so we've lured people into a fighting game through numbers and then they learn what fighting games are at the highest level and so if we give everybody the ability to learn fighting games the way they can learn fighting games that's how we're going to get more people in and that's really really important uh, I hate fighting game docs that just show you notations and no visible presentation, even though I can read them. I've showed you my CVS2 combo fact, right? Like, let's go to, let's go to my CVS2 combo fact. Again, I said this in another one of my videos, but I've been preaching this shit my entire life. I have been preaching this concept my entire life. People think that I'm like growing old and senile and stupid or, or I'm trying to be like friendly to this or whatever when I was talking about the, uh, let's see, where is it? Systems guide, here it is. Highest rated, uh, oh no, here it is, there it is. Uh, let me see. Here we go. This is my CVS2 combo fact over here. Hi, Jack Nathan. This is where I talk about what roles do. And then here's your role data. Here's your role frame data right here. I tell you that Akuma's role is fully invincible for 22 frames. It's invincible high for one frame and then four frames of recovery, 27 full frames. Here's the roll distance. It's long. This one's our medium, et cetera, et cetera. Here's your numbers. Here's your numbers, right? Not everybody likes this shit. You know what I took the time to do? I drew all the rolls out in a chart, ASCII chart. Here's the roll distance in ASCII chart over here. And now look, here's everybody's roll from fastest to longest. And you can see, here's the key. First stage of frames of pure invulnerability. Second stage, vulnerability to low attacks. And third frame of total recovery. Every character, I have written their role frame data as a picture. Every one of them, I wrote as a picture for everybody to see how the roles look. Because there are people who are going to look at this and go, Oh, that's sick, Chang. Oh, look, why is Cammy's roll so long? And da-da-da-da. And you look at this. And here's the frame count up here. I even put the frame count up here. So if you're like over here, but the total frames are over here. Like, I have been doing this for goddamn years, okay? I have been of this mentality of letting you decide how you want to learn the fighting game the way you want to learn the fighting game. You can go by numbers or you can go by visual. And you know what? This, is, this has been my mindset for teaching fighting games forever now. And this is why something like this, to me, is so incredible to put in the game. And yes, that's absolutely true, Ellie. That is why I wrote FAQs and stuff like that. Because I am good at avoiding the, the genius professor syndrome. You know, the genius professor syndrome. There was one time in a linear algebra class that I didn't know how to solve a linear algebra problem. And my professor was a genius professor. So I raised my hand in class and I was like, hey, hey, how do I solve this number? And he's like, okay. And he wrote it on the board. And he wrote it on the board and he looked at it. He's like, well, this obviously equals zero. All right, next question. Literally, that's what he did. He was like, well, this obviously equals zero just by looking at it. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> that didn't help me at all. And genius professors are dangerous. The ones that know it the most but can't teach it are kind of dangerous. 
And I have my specialty and why I do this in my commentary as well. When you sit there and listen to me talk about, oh, last time he did standing medium punch, it was plus. He went for buttons. He did it twice in a row. I wonder if he's going to try throwing in a throw afterwards. You know, I, I, I'm good at trying to say things in ways that people understand and trying to be really good for layman's. And so, no, I'm not a commentator for the experts out there. I don't think a lot of pros like my commentary because it's sometimes very obvious to them. But, like, I think it's actually really important. So, uh, honestly, that's, that's, that's just how I am. And so this right here, sorry for the random soapbox here, but this is, just, this is so important to me. This is so important to me. And look at this. They even figure out. So the reason why I never created a full spreadsheet is because some moves take forever and the spreadsheet would end up becoming like 19 screens long. And they even figured out an interesting way to do this here in that they wrap it around a little bit on the knockdown and you can see that it erases the previous bar. So they just keep looping the bar over and over and over again. And it's a really, really interesting design idea here. Not necessarily the cleanest, might be a little awkward sorry nathan's blocking my microphone might be a little uh, awkward but still very very cool i, I like that I oh i failed that class so badly <laughs> i failed that class so badly coco jean i mean like i'm uh, as a student like as long as i'm one of those people that just needs to know why i just need to know why there was one class that one of my friends also a fighting game player uh, one of the puzzle fighter players that I talked about on commentary recently, uh, we were in the same stats class and he realized that the professor put the answers to all of the homework on his website for when people finish the homework, they could check after they got their homework back. He put all the answers on the, uh, on his website. So he, we signed up for the class and he copied all the answers Betting on the fact that the professor would assign the same problems the next quarter, and he absolutely did. He absolutely did, and this is for a statistics class, and I don't do statistics very well. So I had all the answers to the homework. So as I did the homework, and every time I got the wrong answer, I would go back and try to figure out why, and I would see the mistake that I did. And let me tell you something. I aced the fuck out of that class. I did so well in that class because they gave me the answers and I could figure out where my mistakes were. And dude, like, <laughs> people learn differently, man. People learn differently. Man, this is just, that's honestly the way. Oh, wow, you are a mathematics teacher. Okay. But again, people learn differently. That's how I learned. And, you know, that's kind of what, like, I like about fighting games having frame data in the game. It's like kind of giving you the answers. And I think that's really important. Oh, even after the dash, do you see that? Do you see how it, like, tacked on the dash in here? So, like, throw him, uh, da, 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 recovery. The dash is blue. And he's actually plus one after the dash. So if Ryu, oh, he's minus one. He's minus one. So if Ryu throws and dashes, he's minus one. That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, I aced a, a, a physics test because I memorized all the formulas. I didn't know what any of the formulas did. I just memorized literally the formulas and what each letter in the formula stood for. I then went to every problem and I wrote, like if it said force, the force was this, I just wrote F equals this and I wrote down every number. I plugged them into all the formulas until I got one letter on one side and I wrote the answer down, ace the test. I still don't know anything about physics. I still know nothing about physics, man. <laughs> Memorization is garbage. <laughs> Understanding is important. Anyway, sidetracks here from the training mode. Again, I love this. I absolutely love this. Love this, love this, love this. Uh, let's see here. Learned. Oh, I haven't seen this one yet. I think I just missed this one. Whoa, what is this? 
Set the usage of reversals after recovering from a knockdown. Enable a light punch, normal throw. Whoa. Wake up reversal. You can set multiple. You can choose normals. Oh my god, you can choose the special moves? Which version of it? Overdrive version? You can delay the frames on it? Oh my god. Yo. Dude, do you know how long it probably took them to record that clip with Ryu doing all three options in a row? <laughs> do you know how long it probably took them to record this clip? As a person who has tried to record tutorial videos, that is the first thing that just popped into my mind. <laughs> That's kind of sick. That's kind of sick, dude. That's nice. Now, one of the things I want to see here was, oh, yeah, 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 this, this, this. This is what I wanted to look at. Counter state, punish counter state. Oh, dude. Non-counter action recovery, hitbox appearance oh. period. This is active frame. Projectile active time. Parry counter active time. Post damage block recovery period. Invincibility period. Strike invincibility period. Projectile invincibility period. Ooh. <laughs> This is where it loses you, huh, Kelvane? I mean, I'd be more than happy to explain a lot of this stuff to you. A frame is the smallest unit of time used by the game, with a single frame being 1 60th of a second. Not according to Arturo. Ah! Um, the frame meter shows how much time characters' actions take to perform with each notch on the meter representing a single frame. Startup, the time between the start of a move and when it can connect. Total, the time between the start of a move and its end. Recovery, the difference in time between you and your opponent can act after landing a move. So this is the plus, this is on block, on hit. If the number is positive, it means you can act before your opponent can. Well, it's not necessary to memorize any of these values to enjoy the game. Knowing which moves have fast startup or allow you to act before your opponent. God, thank you for that sentence. Thank you for that sentence. Dude, while it's not necessary to memorize any of these values to enjoy the game, knowing which moves have fast startup or allow you to act, act before your opponent after they block will undoubtedly prove advantageous in combat. That's really, really, really helpful. Yeah, there is a lot of danger on this one, Renato, for colorblind people. And I really want to see the colorblind people out there how they uh, react to this. I'm really curious to see how that actually uh, works out. So, okay, I don't under, entirely understand every one of these. Uh, which ones do you not understand? Counter state. If you get hit out of these frames, you get counter hit. If you get hit out of these frames, you get punish countered. Remember, there is a thing called punish counter. This is, you got hit out of your recovery frames, and this puts you into punish counter state. This is with punish. So counter state means if you get hit out of this, you can get extra counter hit. These ones mean that you get punish counter. Non-counter action recovery, which means that there are probably certain moves that after they miss... While they're, if you hit them out of these frames, you don't get any counter hit at all. You don't get any counter hit. Hitbox appearance period, active frames, projectile active time. It'll show you how active the projectile is. Parry counter active time. When I activate a parry or if I do a drive impact, it'll sh list the frames in purple that you can absorb moves. Post damage block recovery period. This is just when your move is recovering, as we've seen from the previous video. Invincibility period. EX moves will show this when you just can't be hit at all. Strike invincibility period means you can still get hit by thrones, throws and projectiles. Projectile invincibility period means you can still get hit by moves and by throws, but you can go through projectiles, etc., etc. So... So the three blue bar stands for three frames to punish up here. Uh, no, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have three frames to punish. And again, so let's go back to the video here again. Let's take a look at this video here. So what we look at this, if we go at frame data here, we've got green, red, and dark blue. 
Remember, there are three states of every move, startup, active, and recovery. That's basically what this is saying. So basically, uh, the green here, if you get hit out of the startup of your move, you, that is a counter state. So counter state is basically startup. If you get hit out of this, you get a counter hit. That's how it works in Street Fighter V. That's how it works in Street Fighter IV. If you get hit during the startup of your move, it's a counter hit. The red up here is the uh, hitbox appearance, the active frames. So here are the active frames here. Why is startup not a counter hit state? Startup is a counter hit state. Counter state. Counter state is green. So this is counter state right here. It's all green. Right? It's all green here. And then red is the active frames. So the light green, you're talking about this right here, these blue frames right here. These are light blue frames over here. This is not startup here. So this one right here, these look blue to me. I don't know if it looks green to you. They look blue to me. Uh, <laughs> But basically, some moves will have some startup frames that do not count as counter hit state. Some moves are just going to be programmed. Yes, and we just talked about that, Hobo Joe, that we're going to have to see how this works for uh, colorblind people. Uh, it is definitely going to be bad for colorblind people. But as you can see here, as the opponent is getting hit, they trigger a yellow meter here because that's the hit stun so their hit stun here or block stun is going to be listed in yellow post damage slash block recovery period and that's how it that's basically what it shows right here uh oh the dash is light blue so there you go perfect so there are some movement options that you commit to that will be a uh, non-counter hit like that so there you go. The dash is something that you're committed to. That's the frame data of the dash. But if you get hit out of it, it doesn't trigger a counter hit. That's basically what it is. That's basically what it is. So what's the yellow bar below? So uh, again, if you look at this, player one is on top. Player two is on the bottom, as indicated over here on the right. This is the frame data of player one. The bottom bar is the frame data of player two. So if I hit you, this is all reused stuff. And notice that this bar doesn't start doing anything until Luke gets hit. So Luke presents the yellow bar down here. He's hit. And if you can see here, it says that Ryu is plus five. And if you count the bars here, one, two, three, four, five, that means Luke reeled five frame longer then Ryu's uh, rocket punch here recovered. And so that means if Ryu has a move that's faster than five frames or faster, he can combo off of it. See, that's how it works. So player one, player two. Dude, I really, right, Machin Exel? I will explain the whole damn thing to everybody. Yeah, so most moves are going to be counterable on startup. And if you played Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5, that is absolutely the case. When moves are in startup, they create counter hits. You'll also notice that in old games like Street Fighter 4, you never, ever, ever, ever got a counter hit on trade. Because when you get to two people hitting, they've both left their startup and they've both got into their active frames. So if you look over here... With Ryu's bar over here, the only way you can trade is if you both get into your active frames. That is why if you see that if two people hit each other on a trade, it's never a counter hit. Even in Street Fighter V, if two people trade, it's never a counter hit. You'll notice that. <laughs> that is a system built into Street Fighter V. That is not true of every fighting game, but for Street Fighter IV and V, that is the case. I'm guessing for Street Fighter VI, going to be the similar case here but because you've reached your active frame it is no longer counter hit state and so that's why trades never result in a counter hit that's the interesting thing yeah actually i'll probably do a youtube video on this it's probably a really good idea here 
Uh, I mean, they do put frame data in the replays for Street Fighter V already, but they do it in the numbers box. If they add this to the replay in Street Fighter VI, I wouldn't be surprised. The UI is here already. They did something similar to Street Fighter V. Like, if this isn't in Street Fighter VI in the replays, I would be surprised. I would actually be surprised. So we saw this mocap video here for Jamie. Uh, again, you can find all these things on Street Fighter VI. Dude, look at this world tour customization showing all the characters you can create. Really, really cool here. Uh, you'll face a number of trials. What stage is this? Like, this looks like it's a reference for something. Yeah, so the tr you, you understand why replays are hard, right, Hobo Joe? Why rewinding in replays is very, very difficult in these fighting games? Remember, when you're watching a replay in a fighting game... It is not a movie. It is not a... Oh, this is the bison stage, I think. This is the bison stage, isn't it? The Sodom bison stage. Yeah, this might be Sodom bison stage. But again, the reason why replays are hard to rewind and fast forward in... Uh, you're right, because it's a video. It's not a video. It saves inputs, and it's just replaying it and hope that it plays exactly the same. And so it has to rewind to current saved states. So when you rewind it, it rewinds it in chunks and stays at like that. So yeah, you can't just fast forward and rewind through it because it's not actually a movie and they don't have a way to, to, to do that properly because that's being able to calculate a fighting game backwards is like riding an entire engine and that's not worth anybody's time. <laughs> This is the, this looks, I swear this looks like a, a throwback to KOF, you know, like the, 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 the under the freeway bridge here. Like they're doing the, the very famous KOF 98 stage here. That's what this looks like to me. Uh, this is the third strike uh, parry training stage. And then this is, looks like Honda has a bar back here or something. Oh, yeah, the fake Elena. <laughs> oh, yeah, no problem, Hobo Joe. No problem. So here's more stuff. Here's Hagger Stadium. Here's the, the, yeah, this is the sumo house because, yeah, oh, there's Honda on the side over here. I missed him last time. And then, uh, oh, this is that train stage. Yeah, so there's that train over there. So the first time was in daytime. This time is in nighttime. And then here's the pier that you can fight on over here with, uh, I think, is that where Ken's boat is? Yeah, Ken's boat is back there, it looks like. Oh, that one actually is Ken's boat, I think. So Ken's boat is back there. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, talking about them coming in here. Happy birthday, Elena. Battle Hub stuff. Hungry Clicker, Jamie. Uh, closed beta test stuff. Ken, here we go. This is the, these are the, probably the last things I'll go through because the stream has been going on very, very long here. But uh, it's just cool to see the, the cool stuff. I mean, there's so much information that's come out. I mean, I haven't even talked, like, where was the information on Bosch? Where did that come from? Bosch being like your Pokemon trainer rival dude, you know, in the world tour. I guess he's your rival. So whatever avatar you create, your rival is Bosch. And I don't even know. I like I don't even see where they were where they so it was at TGS. Okay, okay. I didn't watch the whole story intro. I guess there was more. Okay. But here we go. This is a Ken here. We see the taunt. Standard fireball. And yeah, again, uh, you know, Shoryuken. And a lot of people have mentioned that the Tatsus look a little funny. And for sure they do. Like, there's something about them that, like, the startup is, like, too floaty. That That's kind of what it comes down to is the way they launch themselves. It doesn't, like, what honestly happens here is that there should have been more, like, less smooth transition but they should have held the leg back a little bit and then when the tatsu starts whip the leg around really fast to give it that kind of impact a little bit more the way he just kind of floats up into the air is just kind of awkward looking but 
Again, we'll get used to it over time. We'll get used to it. Oh, that's the EX Tatsu from freaking Marvel vs. Capcom 1. That's not even an EX Tatsu from Marvel vs. Capcom 1. That's just Ken's Tatsu in Marvel vs. Capcom 1. That's what Ken's Tatsu does. Or, I'm sorry, when Ryu transforms into Ken, that's what it does. <laughs> now, this is the interesting part here. So he's got a low option, I'm guessing, and an overhead option. I'm guessing the low option is probably a true block string. So basically, you block low the entire time. That's probably going to be safe on block as well. But then Ken can also fish for the overhead option that you have to react to and stand and block, basically, to keep yourself safe. And then that's probably the frame trap option, right? Oh, you know what? The low one maybe is not a true block string. Maybe there is the ability for you to actually attack in between those. Um, so this might not be a true frame, uh, uh, might not be a true block string. So someone can mash DP in between or something like that. And maybe uh, this, uh, the, this one is the true block string version here that keeps him safe or something. I don't know, we'll see. I could be, I could have the light and the medium versions backwards if it is the light and medium version. That's that's kind of the, the, the guess right here. And again, Machinex Soul says, I'm always scared of Ken, hate to see him so strong. You know what the beautiful thing about this is? I'm feeling that way about every character right now. And that's a good sign. Like I saw Kimberly's set and I was like, Kimberly is crazy. And then I saw Blanca and you're like, Blanca's insane. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Guhawk, for that. I'll look at that. I'll look at that in a second. I'll look at that in a second. Uh, if I need that link again, I'll ask you again, Guhawk, in just a little bit. And so here's the EX one, which is just a combo ender for damage, it looks like. And then he has this crazy cool new move that's replaced his little flippy kick, his V-Skill 2 and the, uh, and the CVS 2 tumble kick. He has this kick. But what's cool about that is that on combo, it cross it's a side switch which is really neat so it has a hit on the way up bap bap side switch unless that's just a different version unless he has different versions of this move like for example this one doesn't hit on the way up maybe we don't know he wasn't close enough but it hits and then boom here it hits and then he gets a ground bounce side switch so he has the ability to get himself out of the corner on good hits and stuff like that or if he has the ex one it bounces you higher he recovers faster and you get a juggle out of it which is really cool so renato showing me here a video a youtube video here uh with an ad over here hang on Support your, I don't, people are going to ask, you haven't put ad block on here as a content creator? I support my content creators out there. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so here we go. Oh, what is this? Oh, I see. You time stamped it over here. Got it. So this is, um, oh, here's all the wind poses. Are these all the wind poses? Oh, let's just watch this whole video, dude. Let's just watch this whole video. <laughs> So Guile Super, oh, Guile Install Level 2, Guile Level 3, <laughs> where he steps on you and flash kicks you. Oh, shoot, it's muted. I didn't realize it had sound. Let's go back and start again. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, charging up the sun. This, this thing is like gravity defying steps on you and then flash kicks you again, dude. I mean, my, uh, it's whatever, that's fine. Kimberly, here we go, level one super. Pow, pow. And then uh, if it kills you, I guess that's when it kills you over here. This is the level two super, I'm guessing. Or is this the level three? That looks like the level, no, this has got to be the level three here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Dude, that level 2 super is so sick, dude. 
I mean, the, the ninjas have always been like wall run characters and stuff like that, but like the animation on this is just like, that's just, as a Maki fan, that's cool. That's so Maki. That's so Maki right there. The mock that's the Maki uh, super that she had when she 720'd you, kind of. And then this, yeah, all the, can the cans are just floating there. And here we go, Jury, boom, level one super. Level two super. Install, it's the Feng Shui engine, okay. It's the Feng Shui engine there. And here we go, level three. Two different endings, on whether, depending on your life. If your life is low, she goes for this kick ending. Otherwise, she ends it that's the same way as before. Ken here, level one. Oh, interesting. And then, oh, Shippu is level three. Interesting. I, I would have thought they would have, I mean, level two. I would have thought they made Shippu level one because in third strike, Shippu was always the, the weak super. And then the level three super. Splat. And he probably adds that punch only if he's in critical state. <laughs> <laughs> they just show all the facial expressions, all right. So here's Guile's win pose. Yo, god damn. God damn, he's so jacked. <laughs> Holy shit. Hang on, let's look at these faces again. That's so funny. <laughs> but dude, Guile's arm. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. If he's retired, he definitely didn't stop going to the gym. <laughs> Shit. Oh, shit. Yo, Guile is flexing? That's like the most, like, flexy, show-offy thing that I've ever seen Guile do outside of combing his hair. Yo. <laughs> Yo, he, she slides into the foreground. That's adorable. She slides into the foreground. They better not have a lot of foreign, uh, for, like, like foreground objects that she can slide through. <laughs> She's the best. I <laughs> like the other, the other Kimberly's just like, man, god damn it, ah. Oh. Like, oh, I can't believe I lost. Ah! Oh, Jesus Christ. Dude, Jury's faces make me laugh so much, dude. Like, Oh, that's a sick win pose. That's nice. And then, best win pose ever. <laughs> she even face palms after she says yata. It's so good, dude. Huh? Huh? Er, ah, what? You? Er. Yeah, Soul Calibur 2, yeah, the, the, oh, they, they used to make noise in Soul Calibur 2, Viperus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's laughing into her hand, face palming like, God, that's so stupid, or like, what a dumb wind pose. Whoa, yo, he's got like fire wind poses. Kick fire, dude. Oh, so cool. Yo, nice. <laughs> Did her eyebrows go up a little bit more after a little bit? They did! Did you see that? If you hold the face! If you hold the face, it actually changed a little bit. Look at her eyebrows. Dude, they actually moved up a little bit more. <laughs> Is
Is it pressure sensitive? I don't know, dude. That was amazing. <laughs> she just does the win pose. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Ryu, no faces. That seems appropriate. Dude, that would have been hilarious if Ryu just couldn't actually change his... That can't actually change his face. <laughs> like, you just hit all the directions and it doesn't change. <laughs> that actually would be amazing. I don't know if it's a bug because it works. It works. Like, see? Like, it actually looks like she goes, huh? Huh? Like, it, it, like she adds to the concern. Like, I think it looks right. <laughs> his eyes just twitch. Like, I would love for video games to do more goofy things like that. You know, like, just as a joke, like, Ryu just can't change his face because he's so stoic. <laughs> <laughs> Ryu, always oh, so serious. Why so serious? <laughs> <laughs> like, Luke is one of those people that, like, I feel like I've met this guy in real life. Like, I feel like we all know this guy. At some point in time, we've all met Luke before, dude. <laughs> Oh god, this dance. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like I said, I love the fact that, like, they just made it as much as possible that he is just, like, the biggest idiot ever, dude. It's so hilarious. Dude, I know so many people who are just all down for this, for Jamie. Holy crap. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Ronaldo, for that. That was awesome. Did you download awesome video right there. All right, so that's Ken. And then they just released a Blanca over here. Uh, yeah, here's Blanca. Now, they don't have a link to his character page here. <laughs> We've seen all the Ken memes. <laughs> Uh, where was the, uh, Ken post over here? There was the Ken post over here. Holy crap, it was way back over there. Wow, they talked about Ken a long time ago. Jesus Christ, it's right here. Yeah, so here it is. Here's Ken. So then if we go to characters, we can go to Blanca. Let's take a look at Blanca here. So a kind-hearted defender of nature, Blanca has become an adventure tour guide. Confident his intimate knowledge of the jungle will serve as a springboard to fame and a comfortable life for his beloved mother. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you for referring to his mother. Thank you. God, is she anywhere in any of these backgrounds or does she show up anywhere? She had better show up somewhere, dude. I want, I want, I need uh, Blanca's mom to show up somewhere, dude. I need Blanca's mom to show up somewhere. She's more on the left, huh? Okay. Like I said, I really hope Blanca speaks some Portuguese. I think that would be so cool if he actually spoke some Portuguese because he grew up in Brazil. Brazil. Uh, but Blanca, dude, here's the craziest thing about Blanca, dude. I don't think he's a charge character anymore. <laughs> I don't think he's a charge character anymore. <laughs> and that is terrifying. Because he's trying to be more human. He's trying to gain more popularity. <laughs> oh, his mom is in the stage here. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. Oh, snap. That's funny. Oh my god. That's amazing. <laughs> oh man. Dude, is that his taunt, dude? Because that's an amazing taunt. And like, he literally just has all these Blanca Chans on his belt. Like, you can see the Blanca Chan is literally just hanging on over here, dude. They're all just sitting there. But look, look at that. He was just standing there and then he Blanca balls. 
It's like a half circle forward motion because he walks backwards for half a second and then he Blanca balls. So it seems like that. It's like it's just a half circle or something like that. Yeah, I, and then look, he's just standing there. And then he does the rainbow roll. Rainbow roll. Not doing anything. Rainbow roll. I don't think he's a charge character anymore. And what's even scarier? Watch this. He did not whiff any buttons. It could be modern controls. It could be. But he obviously did electricity just by walking up without whiffing any buttons. So electricity is either it's modern controls or electricity is also just an input now. Yeah, modern controls on charge characters still have to charge. People did say that about Guile, right? That they, you did see you had to keep holding the button. You had to still keep holding the direction. And then walk up EX Blanc, EX electricity? Well, her, her kicks have been a motion ever since Street Fighter V. So, yeah, so they, they people said that when um, uh, at TGS they tested it and Guile has to stay charging, I believe. Is the snake in the background getting angry? This one, the giant snake here or different snake? He's got watermelons. He's got watermelons. Oh my God. The background, he's got watermelons. And then he has a air Blanca ball. Now, someone pointed out, this is the interesting thing over here, is that he does crouch before he does this. So maybe the air Blanca ball is a charge move so that you can only really do it from jump back. So if you have, oh, the head of the snake is right there. I didn't even see it. So if you, you might not be able to do this while jumping forward. Unless there's like some crazy trick out of it or maybe from his V skill or his this move right here Maybe you can do it from that move. Maybe that's what that was Maybe he can use commands to jump forward and then he does the air Blanca ball So that might be the air Blanca ball being done from that But if the air Blanca ball is a charge move because he, he crouches and it looks like he charges a little bit That way he can't jump forward and dive kick on you for free, basically. Yeah, exactly. Like the Cabre air drill. Or, as I like to say, like Junie's air drill. Excuse me, the Cabre got it from Junie. Okay? Okay? No, because these are around the world. That's why. So this is in Brazil. So you wouldn't be able to run into the stage in, in, in Metro City. <laughs> so there's the that version right there. And then he's got an EX version here, which hits twice. And then this is where Blanca gets scary. This is where Blanca gets scary. Dude, that thing didn't do anything. It's just sitting there. Oh yeah, you're right. His mom is back there. Nice. <laughs> His mom is back there. And so yeah, look, the thing just sits there. It does nothing. And then as soon as he electrocutes it, it walks forward and he has mini Faust. He has a mini Faust now. Not only does he have a mini Faust, but if he uses EX electricity, the doll does this instead. It hops and then walks forward. It hits while hopping and then walk. He creates a shield in front of him. And then he can super it. Dude, this thing is so crazy. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, you're right. It kind of does a ground shaving roll. You're right. Oh, man. Dude, Blanca looks insane. And that's the only two characters that they've shown so far of the new two characters. Obviously, we've seen the videos of, you know, Kimberly and everybody else before TGS. But those are the first two character videos. We ha we don't have a Dalsam or a Honda video at this point in time. Uh, but these all had old videos uh, already. We've seen 
a lot of their videos already. I'm just trying to cover all the stuff that's happened since Tokyo Game Show. But man, we just seriously went from no information to like everything everywhere all at once, dude. Like seriously, like all the information just we just got everything it's crazy yeah i think they do have a synopsis here so dalsam a monk and yoga master from india who has served as a guide for countless suffering souls prefers to avoid conflict when possible but his innate hatred of evil compels him to dispense stern justice whoa what is that is that a taunt does he do the Neo Tot by stretching his arm at you? Does he do this at you, dude? Oh my god. And there's that heavy kick, dude. Jesus. Heavy kick back to being the diagonal one. Yoga flame, go, yoga blast going up. And then the super over here. And then, of course, uh, Honda, a sumo wrestler looking to bring the sport worldwide. E Honda has the skills of a Yokozuna, but his constant globe trotting has prevented his promotion. <laughs> also, an expert chef renowned for mouthwatering Chenko stew. So, E Honda back into the mix over here. I mean, it's nice that they gave us these like full character portraits, too. Good for content creators and stuff. But here we go. I still want to... Is that a taunt when he praises the sun? Or is this a power-up? Does he actually... Is this his taunt? <laughs> or is this actually a power-up when he praises the sun? <laughs> oh, man. It's a power-up? That's a move? Okay, okay. <laughs> and then 100 hand slap. Dude, look at all the hands. Look at all the hands everywhere. That's cool looking. Yo, he's in a ring of fire. The ring of fire. The ring of fire. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so cool. Oh, man. But, I mean, like I said, this stream's been going on for a long time. I know, but this is, this is absolutely enjoyable here. But there is one more thing that I wanted to, 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 to talk about. Uh, my probably one of my most favorite things that they did in this game. If I can find the tweet, because I know I retweeted it. I said, <laughs> I'm asking who the hell Bosch is. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find my tweet here or my retweet. Where was this? Where, no, this is too long ago. This uh, had to have been a while ago. There's so much information that I've retweeted about this game that it's so hard to find my retweet. Oh my God, there's so much information about this game, dude. Uh, I mean, if Johnny Young Bosch doesn't actually... <laughs> Voice boss, it would just there's something wrong. There's something wrong for sure. God, where is it? Can I actually do a search here? Does anyone know have a link to the tweet? Because I know I have it in here somewhere. I'm sure I retweeted it somewhere. Does anyone have the tweet to them bringing back the song from Street Fighter the movie into Street Fighter V? Because I can't even express to you how happy that made me. Oh, thank you. There we go. Dude, you found my tweet for it before I could find it? Oh, my God. When did I tweet this? September 16th? September 17th. Da, 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 da. I need that. And I get... Where? Why is my... 
Dude, why can't I find my own tweet on my own goddamn page? Ah, oh, here it is. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Jeez, you found it before I did Lurker Spine. That is amazing. But yes, so I am one of those people out there who believes that the American, American soundtrack on Street Fighter the movie is awful. Because I love the Japanese soundtrack to the Street Fighter Fi, uh, Street Fighter 2 animated movie, anime movie, so much. And one of the reasons why is this song is one of my favorite songs, like, ever. I love this song to death. The chord progression, the mood, the kind of weird, like, sadness that it invokes... But, like, the hype, but the sadness, like, I don't know, it's, dude. Like, you want to know how much I have listened to this song? one point memorize this entire song even though it's in a language that I don't know I knew this whole song even though it's in a language I didn't know and I'm scared if I play this I'm gonna get uh I'm probably gonna get uh 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 that stupid copyright stuff going over there but dude you don't understand that <laughs> I got two subscriptions for singing the song dude <laughs> I got two subscriptions for singing this song dude thank you by the way to uh to uh Koei and Nick Yick but again dude this song I love this song so much and the fact that they're actually bringing this song back just like brought me, filled me with so much joy. Like I can't even explain to you that that they're gonna, so basically say the JP theme for Street Fighter VI is a redone version of main theme for, I don't know when they're actually gonna play it or how it's gonna work, but like, hey, thank you Prosody J for the sub as well. Dude, you don't even understand. Like, I love that song. I, I can't even explain to you how much, for some reason, for some reason, I, I love that song so much. And yeah, Tetsuya even saying my pronunciation is actually good. So, the craziest thing about it, Tetsuya, uh, Choco Blanca sang that song at Daigo's uh, karaoke tournament. Daigo ran a karaoke tournament for Street Fighter V. Choco Blanca played in it, and she sang that song. And the next time I saw Choco Blanca, I was like, you sang that song very well. And she was like, which song? Thank you. And, I, and then I started singing it, and she was like, that's really good. <laughs> she was like surprised that I could sing the Japanese. Oh, man. Yeah, she was actually kind of surprised that I was able to sing the Japanese in there. So that actually song, the lyrics of that song, I've looked up before. And uh, it's the reason why I understand the romanization of Japanese so well is using that song. Uh, why, you know, you have to do Senpu Kyak with two U's, but Kyak has a U, but you don't really pronounce the U, right? So like when you say Tats, Tatsumaki Sen Pukyak, you don't actually say Tatsu, you say Tats, like there's, there's, a, there's a syllable afterwards, but you don't actually say Tatsu, it's Tatsumaki Sen Pukyak, right? Like those kind of things, like I learned it all from studying the lyrics of that, of that song, dude. But I literally sat there and like read the lyrics over and over again, watching, listening, and trying to figure out and trying to memorize the song phonetically. And so that's like, what I've done.
<laughs> but again, you know, without spending and then another 7,000 years on this, dude, I love that song so much. It's like one of my favorite, like all time favorite songs. Like it just hits me emotionally in a way that like, and then when they play the instrumental version of the movie, and that's why I like it so much better when they play the instrumental version, when Ryu and Ken are fighting Bison, like the way the song sounds paired with Ken struggling and trying to gain control of himself again. Like, like I said, there's a certain kind of like minor key sadness that pervades through the song, even though it's hype. And so when you, Ken is like actually struggling and trying to regain his power and he's like stumbling and you hear this theme in the background. It's just like, I get like so emotional about it, dude. Like it's just, it's so good. And so, yeah, like I've loved this song for a long time. And uh, the fact that they actually have brought this song back is it's so, so cool, dude. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> Oh, man. I wonder if that's actually canon, Silas. It'd be interesting. Uh, I wonder if that's actually canon. I don't think that movie is canon, but regardless, that's what it is. Any case, is there anything else that anybody feels like I should be mentioning that I should talk about here on the stream? But uh, honestly, like, uh, is Super Coco Jean Japanese? Uh, I don't know what he's saying over here. I should I should see what the translations that he is, that he's saying over here. Uh, we don't know anything about DLC characters yet, Smelly Beetle. We don't know yet. Uh, i dude. I will do karaoke any day of the. I've done karaoke streams before. You guys don't even understand how much I'm just obsessed with singing all the time. So. Um, uh, oh, the, yeah, let me just see the, the, the trailer with Bosch. Let's go ahead and look at that, too. Let's take a look at that uh, before we leave. I can't do a lot of songs in Japanese. I can do only a few, so... Uh, I used to be able to do rinda rinda, rinda rinda rinda, but I can't, I, I mean, if you put the words in front of me, I can definitely still do it. <laughs> But uh, I, can't, I don't have it memorized anymore. <laughs> Dude, I was obsessed with the original uh, uh, Oenden. I was obsessed with the original Oenden, even though they're all covers and not necessarily the right versions of the song, as I discovered later. I was obsessed with a lot of those songs, dude. Uh. All right, let's take a look at this Bosch trailer one last time. So, 3110. Oh, I see. This is where they're just doing a lot of the, the stuff over here. Okay. So they're showing after you create your fighter, what happens. Oh, yeah, definitely term. Hopefully, please, please be safe. You can choose lots of characters. should about wrap up your enrollment again you can call me luke so this is actually just them showing a bunch of the uh this is just them showing a bunch of the uh the 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 story like the start of the uh st the story huh there are many ways to enjoy world tour sorry about that yeah, Tutorial Luke is the teacher. He walking. says, call me coach. So let's fast forward through this a little bit. Let's take a look at some more stuff. Oh, yeah. So here's the first part right here where they teach you some basic stuff. And then they get into the story over here. This video is really quiet, so it's hard to hear. This is a high fight video, isn't it? That's how the basics are. So I think he has the volume turned down really low. Remember, even the biggest rockets need a stable launching pad for takeoff. 
or else they're just gonna crash and burn. You get me? Coach, how is any of that gonna help him handle this? I like the fact that Luke has a derpy face. You might wonder who it was. Let's use uh, basic moves yeah, and you... beat up the other. Yeah, you and Boss both have Luke moves. Oh. Looks like it's a tough match. <laughs> the computer's actually like pretty aggressive. <laughs> Throw the other way. Oh, other one That's away. good that they could create your avatar in that defeated. scene. Like real time like that. That's actually really nice. Gosh, come on, man. Are you really gonna be the type to jump before you think? But coach, that was the kind of situation I want to learn to deal with. You're not here to punch bags either, right? Hmm. Ah, right. It's true. It's this true. Is he signed up for the same regiment. Most cutscenes are. are like this these days. Yeah. yeah. But it just, I, I just like that the filter is very real time as well. Look, both of you are my trainees, and you joined at the same time. So play nice, okay? Ah, oh, the classic no handshake. Both came here looking for strength. If both of us are trying to find that strength, sooner or later, one of us is going to get there first. What happens to the other person then? <laughs> so botch. So why bother pretending now? <sighs> okay, so that's who Bosch is. Okay. Oh yeah, and then it ends with him opening man. the door. That's yeah. A really tough question. You gotta know what strength means to you before you go looking for it. You go looking for the wrong things, and you really might end up in that situation someday. But you know what? You can cross that bridge when you get to it. You two are still my plucky little trainees. Now listen to what your coach says. Bosch is brand new, as far as we can tell. Focus on that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's get back to business. You wanted something more practical, right? Well, practicality comes in many forms. But if you want to start off on the right foot in this city, Hit the streets. <laughs> Yay! Nakayama-san, Matsumoto-san, yay! Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, for sure it's corny, but again, it's like, it's, it exists. And it's so much better than not having any of this at all before, dude. So I, I'm, again, I'm really happy they're doing this. I think that this will bring in a lot more people playing fighting games. You could ask L.I. Joe, before 5 came out, me and L.I. Joe were like, man, Street Fighter 4 is on such a high. If Street Fighter 4 comes out right, man, like this could be the one that takes us into the next level. And we were just like, we're so, like, we were so excited. And then Street Fighter 5 came out and it was, wah, 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 right? I mean, seriously, but this right now, what we're seeing here is, oh man, there's just like so much potential, so much promise. I'm so excited for this and uh, I'm, I'm ready to go, dude. I, I'm ready to go. I mean, look, I don't think anybody was in denial for Street Fighter V, right? It was new and I really enjoyed it. Uh, and actually at this point right now, I think Street Fighter V is a better game than Street Fighter IV. Like, I legit think that. Like, I look back at Street Fighter IV, and sometimes when I look back at it, I'm like, God, I don't miss this game. <laughs> sometimes I just, I don't miss Street Fighter IV in some weird way. Um, I really like how Street Fighter V 
uh, is right now. And yeah, again, a lot of people love Street Fighter 4, and of course you're going to. It's like one of your first Street Fighter games. Like, it's hard not to have that soft spot for the game. And even when Street Fighter 5 was coming out, I used to say I thought Street Fighter 4 was in a great state for Ultra. I was really happy with how the game turned out. And that's how I feel about Street Fighter V as well. And again, Street Fighter V is just a very different game. If you grew up loving Street Fighter IV, Street Fighter V is a very, very different game. But again, keep in mind that this is not a unique situation. These Street Fighter Alpha players, Street Fighter uh, II players, a lot of them didn't play Street Fighter III. And a lot of Street Fighter III players don't play anything else. Like, if you think that, you know, the history of Street Fighter was literally everybody playing every Street Fighter because they came out, it's not true at all. The, the sect of Street Fighter 3 players is very different than the sect of Street Fighter 4 players, is very different than the sect of Alpha players, which is very different than the sect of Super Turbo players, which is different than the sect of even uh, CVS2 players. A lot of people, you know, they could misconstrue history as, you know, like, these are all Street Fighter, duh, you know, no, dude, they're all different. They're all very, very different. Before Street Fighter V, I used to say Street Fighter III was the most different Street Fighter game ever, and maybe Alpha Three was the most different Street Fighter game ever, but that just basically means that they're all super different, and that's cool, and, and you know what? Good, because you know what? You know what Street Fighter does that's really, really cool? Is that we're still running Super Turbo tournaments. We still have awesome events like the Co-op Cup for Third Strike. We don't stop playing these games. Four is the only one that's been weirdly, kind of weirdly pseudo abandoned. And I really hope that gets fixed at some point in time. But as Street Fighter V, as Street Fighter VI becomes mainstream, I really hope a lot of people keep playing Street Fighter V. Let's keep all the different games alive. And that's why one of the, that's what's great about having the games be different. It's why I don't mind games like Strive being very different, finally, like killing the legacy stuff. Like that to me is something that I enjoy because we already have the game that is the one that you enjoy. If you love Street Fighter 4 and you're mad and you're like, Street Fighter 5 plays so different, I don't want to play this, you don't have to. <laughs> Keep playing some Street Fighter 4, man. Keep playing. Dude, people are still playing Street Fighter 4 online. I heard the ranked actually is still popping in Street Fighter 4. You can find people actually strangely better than in some modern fighting games today. You can still find people. And I think that's wonderful. I think that's wonderful. And uh, I prefer it this way. This is the way I'd rather have it. I don't want the current game to replace the old game. I would love the current game to expand on it. Being a Street Fighter fan, we've had that benefit because Alpha was so different than 2. Alpha 3 was so different than Alpha 2. CVS, completely different game. Street Fighter 3 played nothing like the original Street Fighters. Street Fighter 4, I mean, I always tell the story that in Street Fighter 3, you jumped a lot because you had parry. So that whole concept of why don't, why, like, don't jump, don't jump in Street Fighter games didn't really work in Third Strike. People jump a lot in Street Fighter 3 because you have parries, right? There's a way to save yourself. I barely played Third Strike, right? I'm not a good Third Strike player. I don't have a lot of the Third Strike muscle memory. So when Street Fighter IV came out, I played against uh, a, 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 a very feverish Street Fighter III player. And we played Street Fighter IV, and I played Cammy, and he couldn't beat me as easily because all the other Third Strike players he played kept jumping at him, and he would anti-air them and kill them. And when he fought me, he was like, you never jump. And I was like, why is that weird? I come from Super Turbo. <laughs> I don't jump in Super Turbo. You don't jump in Super Turbo, dude. And it, it's like the, the way the games are so different from each other is good. It's good. And we should embrace that. So again, 
if you go into Street Fighter VI hoping it's like Street Fighter V, it's a problem. But at the same time, if you skip Street Fighter V and you're from Street Fighter IV and you're like, you know what? <laughs> Street Fighter VI will show you what real footsies is all about. Now you'll see what I'm all made of. This is the game here. Dude, just get over that. It's a different game, dude. It's a different day game. You might be good. You might not be good. Again, just because you are good at Super Turbo does not mean you are good at Alpha 2, does not mean you are good at Alpha 3, does not mean you are good at CVS 2, does not mean you are good at Third Strike, does not mean you are good at Street Fighter 4, does not mean you are good at Street Fighter 5. Obviously, there are core fundamental skills that translate between them. The archetypes are the same. Ryu is still going to be Fireball Uppercut, but then you go to Street Fighter 3. Fireballs aren't the same. It was about EX Fireballs and stuff. You know, it's, it's different. It's different between all the games, and embracing that, I think, is one of the most important things. I have no expectations of Street Fighter VI feeling like any of the other games. And the fact that it's become this very resource management heavy game, I talked about how the drive rush looks really good, drive impacts might be strong, but again, it really depends on how much your drive gauges. If I sit here and drive rush all day, or if I EX moves all day, Right, if I overdrive my moves all the time, and I forget, drive impacts are what, two bars, I think they are? If I see you're at one bar drive impact, I'm just gonna drive impact you because you can't counter it with your own drive impact. You might be able to parry it, but I'll be safe, right? Oh, it costs one bar, dang. Ooh, drive impacts only cost one bar, I'm surprised about that. But, uh, and see, Ozzy, I, I would actually even disagree with that. So you say there are players like Jay Wong that are just good at all of them. I will tell you again, and I tell this story all the time, Justin and Daigo both had a lot of trouble in Street Fighter V. They did not have the success in those games that they had in Street Fighter IV. It took a, a, a quite a long time for them to gain that kind of uh, level. Daigo did it by just understanding what Street Fighter V was about and just saying, I'm embracing Street Fighter V. Justin did it by finding Manat. And Manat, when played correctly, avoids Street Fighter V. If Justin plays his classic turtle style, which is what Justin was always known for before Rufus, the opponent never gets in on him. He doesn't care. He doesn't have to care about frame data. Justin's biggest success was when he played his style with Monat, playing his style of game by literally avoiding Street Fighter V. And that's where Justin then got top eight at Capcom Cup was with Monat. Again, different games reward different people. In fact, even during the Alpha and the uh, Alpha 3 and the Street Fighter 3 Third Strike period, John Choi was decidedly better, I feel like, at, at, at uh, Alpha 3 than Vi was, but Vi was better at Third Strike than John Choi was. Like, actually, no, it was more the CVS2 thing. Like, John Choi was really good at C It was one of those things, but, like, it's not always that, you know, your skill level is just going to make you good at every game. Different games will appeal to different people, and that's, I think, is amazing, and I think that's great. And I think that's the way that it should be. Like I said, Street Fighter V. So the old games, the reason why old people don't like Street Fighter V is because old games, we didn't have frame data tables. We didn't have internet. We didn't have training mode. You can't design those games for studying purposes. You cannot design a fighting game that way. So old school fighting games played much to the emotion to what Daigo talked about, the decision making. And so all of those fighting games out there designed for arcade quarter play, appealed to a lot of people like me, who are more emotion players than math players. It wasn't that the math players didn't exist, it's that they didn't find the games fun. <laughs> but Street Fighter V has opened up a game for so many players who didn't have fighting games before, 
and they are really happy and they really enjoy that game. It's just that the old players don't do it because we skewed towards what was given us in the past. There's no right or wrong answer. There's no, the fighting game should be this way or should be that way. It's just the circumstances of our environment change things very, very, very differently. Street Fighter 4 was already frame data, but it wasn't. Because I could DP FADC. I didn't care whose turn it was. If I was minus two, I was going to DP. All you cared about was punish. And that's how old Street Fighter games were about with frame data. You just cared if, if it meant you could punish. But I could backdash with invul. I could uppercut FADC to keep myself safe. And so there was always this question of like, should I take my turn or not or whatever? Also, no input buffer in Street Fighter 4. You could do all the frame kills you want that set up all the, the, the uh, perfect meaties and all that stuff. You could just be wrong. You could just hit the button wrong. I've always said, Balrog, dash punch, minus three on block, cami, far jab, three frame, jab into drill, easy punish on Balrog, dash punch. However, no cami ever did it. No cami ever did it unless they added a back select plink button. If they den didn't add a back select plink button, they never did it. Because you know why? No input buffer. If they missed it, they died. You would do jab into drill, and then Balrog would kill you because they blocked it. Input buffer changed a lot about Street Fighter V. People don't realize how much input buffer changed the way Street Fighter V played. The input buffer changed everything so that when you are punishable by three frames, you made sure you punish them. And you probably will 90% of the time. And again, so, uh, and again, Shao Hai probably did it because he had the back plink button to give him a two frame window instead of a one frame window to punish it. And again, is input buffer good or bad? I see people in the chat. I love it. I hate it. I love it. I hate it. Dude, it depends on the game, man. Like Tekken and Soul Calibur, like Street Fighter V has an input buffer of about three frames. Soul Calibur and Tekken have like input buffers of like seven frames or something like that, right? Those games are fantastic. They're great. I love Soul Calibur because the games are designed with that in mind. So Street Fighter V is designed with the input buffer in mind. That's why it's the way it is. That's why it's a game that won't have invul DPs without meter and stuff like that. So again, uh, input buffer Santana Sand is if I hit a button, it repeats the button automatically in code for two more frames. So in other words, if I want to hit my strong button so that my medium punch comes out the very first frame it can possibly come out, I can hit the button on that very frame. I can hit it one frame earlier, or I can even hit it two frames earlier. Because if I hit it two frames earlier, the game automatically repeats the button for the next two frames. So even if I hit it two frames earlier, it goes, press the button. You're still recovering. Don't do anything. Next frame, you press that button. You're still in recovery. Don't do anything. Next frame, I'm going to repeat it again. Oh, you recovered. Do the button. And that's why double tapping in Street Fighter V works so well. And double tapping in Street Fighter IV is a really not a very useful tactic. In Street Fighter V, double tapping works because if you hit it really fast, you get it repeated for like six frames in a row. Whereas in Street Fighter 4, if you double tap, you still have that blind spot in between the two presses. So it's, it's, the, it's the way it works. And it really just depends on what you enjoy out of fighting games, right? A lot of people out there love the execution. People love the execution. They want to see you be talented at one frame links. That gets them hype. A lot of people hate that shit and they want fighting games to be more about the brain. So it just really depends on what kind of person you are. Is input buffer good or bad? There's no answer to that question. There's literally zero answer to that question. Because again, like I was talking about learning and training mode, everybody is different and different things will appeal to different people. And that's fine. Again, I, I just, it, it, again, like it might seem like a cop out for me to say this, but again, like I really just believe that. I, Street Fighter V was a struggle for me. But for me, coming to the conclusion that Street Fighter V helped me get, that Street Fighter V opened up fighting games to a whole sect of players that we didn't have before, 
is actually really neat. Because I know a lot of people are like, oh my god, Frame Data made the game, I understand the game so much. And that's really cool, because in the end, regardless of whether or not you are a science or a heart player, in the end, it comes down to the heart decision making. And if we get you there through science, and if we get you there through heart, you get there eventually and you learn fighting games. And that's the most important thing. That's why I'm a, I, I can't say I like Input Buffer more than others. If I had to give an opinion, I love Execution. I do think One Frame Links and Street Fighter 4 kind of suck. I didn't like them. Plinking was the only thing that made them like that much better to me. Um, but I do like execution. I don't think one frame links is the right way to do execution. So to be fair, input buffer really has no uh, say in that. Now, my idea for input buffer, because one frame links suck and Street Fighter V is a very math game, so they know what combos, and it's very intentionally designed what links into what. You know, a lot of things are one frames links in Street Fighter V. A lot of things are one frame links, but because of the input buffer, it's really, really, really easy to do. Guilty Gear Strive has some input buffer, I think, but not for everything. I'm not 100% sure. But the thing about it is that um, Street Fighter V, if it didn't have input buffer, would be one of the most unplayable fighting games ever. Everything is one frame link, and it would be super annoying to play that game. Like, you just wouldn't be able to do any combos. It's just, it would have been miserable, right? So putting the input buffer in there is nice. My idea for input buffer was that you only have input buffer if the opponent is in hit stun. That's my idea. That's how, if I made a fighting game, that's how I would do it. Because then the one frame links are easier, but the punishes are hard, the frame traps are hard, the frame kills are hard, etc., etc. I would just put it only if the opponent is in hit stun that you actually get it. Not even in block stun, but only in hit stun. That's basically how I would do it. So, But, again... I would be designing a fighting game for a certain sect of people. There's no way I could expect everyone to love my fighting game because my fighting game would probably be pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty weird. <laughs> I tried to design a fighting game when I was young and it was the most complicated game ever. And one of my friends who is a game designer, I told him all my ideas for my fighting game. And he was like, no one's ever going to play your fighting game. And I was like, shut up, man. What are you talking about? My fighting game would be awesome. It's like complex. And he was like, no one will play your game. And I didn't understand it back then. I totally understand it now. I totally understand it now. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, uh, that's it. It's 930. I've been streaming for four hours already. This is going to be a fun video to put on YouTube. <laughs> to uh, timestamp and all that stuff like that. Let me ask you guys in the chat, and again, thank you guys for sticking around here. If I upload videos to YouTube, would you, are you, would you be okay if I split the video into multiple things? Or do you want me just to upload the whole four hour thing all at once? Like, do you prefer it that way? Or do you prefer it to be, would you be okay with it split up? Because obviously split up is better for the algorithm. But the thing about it is, now that I'm the only one doing the content here on YouTube, I think everyone's expecting all the videos to be like four hours. And if you're watching my videos, you know what you're getting into. <laughs> oh, man. I'll figure it out. One of the best things about it is um, that when you do put the timestamps, they, they, they section, they chunk the actual timeline in YouTube. That has been one of the absolute most useful thing. So I don't have to split it up into multi videos. People can actually just use those timestamps in there. So I'll probably try to do that, but we'll see what happens again. I, again, 
Cerulean Sky, it's not guaranteed for money because I've also heard that splitting it up into multiple videos gets people annoyed because then they get like multiple notifications and then they want to, they'd rather just put it on the background. They don't want to have to move to the next video, etc., etc. It's, it's crazy. It's like the YouTube, the YouTube game is, is, um, not fun. <laughs> It's complex. It's complex to say the least. So uh, I might split it up into multiple days. I might split this up into multiple days. We'll see what happens. So in any case, uh, but timestamp might be the best way to do it just to get it all out there. Ah, whatever. I'm probably just going to put up as one video for now. We'll see how it goes. If you've made it this far on YouTube, let me know in the comments whether you'd prefer a full video or split up content because you're watching it on YouTube. This is for you. You let me know. So uh, I will uh, figure that out. Any case, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for hanging out over here um, and uh, going through all this information dump with me <laughs> because there is a lot of stuff going on in Street Fighter 6 and we got so much information. I am very hyped for the game. I'm excited, I love what they're doing. It's definitely a love letter to the franchise and to fighting games overall. So uh, let's go ahead and before we end the stream, we will try to raid somebody here. So uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, let's see, I know, um, do, 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 do. Uh, where's is Yipes' uh, DNF duel still running right now? Is his uh, can opener still going? No, I think it's over right now. I think it ended already. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Hytani and Nemo have plenty of views. I always like to try to help people who have less views. I know that's kind of backwards. I think you're supposed to raid people who have lots of views so that their viewers know that you exist but i like trying to help other people so uh let's see if there's anybody else that i can help out there there's street fighter 5 stuff let's look at guilty gear strive over here as well um what about kof I always like to help out some KOF here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Nerd Josh is streaming. Actually, Rome is streaming. I'm going to send you guys the Rome. I'm going to send you guys the Rome because Nerd Josh has, uh, Nerd Josh has 100 viewers. Rome is, uh, has a smaller viewer. So I'm going to send you guys to Rome himself. Uh, please tell him I said hi. Enjoy his, uh, street, uh, his KOF com content. He is also an excellent commentator of the game as well. So please check him out. Tell him I said hi. I'm not going to jump over there myself. But uh, other than that, we will see you guys next week on the Not Tuesday show. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a good night. Peace out. And see you next time.